What's up, fam? I see y'all getting in the building. Shout out to Soul. Welcome down, Ram. Big stepping. Salute, family. Salute. So this one, uh, I want to say thank you, Soul, man. This uh, stream yard thing you put me on, man. I'm gonna try it out today. And um, after I get my main topics across, man, I'm uh, I'm really gonna uh, try to do that that whole Canvas Samuels thing where we can get people on here. And we can uh, we can rap about different things, man. Uh, as y'all know, punctuality is my big thing, man. So we won't be starting until exactly uh, 8 a.m. Shouts out to the real Crazy G 103. Yes, sir. If y'all don't know, me and the brother Soul, or Soul and the brother Soul and I, let me get my grammar right. Soul and I are are putting together a late night thing where you know what I'm saying, like a Friday night, Saturday night sip and chill where we get together and you know what I'm saying. If you blaze, you can blaze one. If you drink, you can have you a sip on something. You know what I'm saying? But it's a, a little less formal, you know, where we can get loose. Uh, Saki right now is in the backyard. So that, if y'all hear that barking, that's Saki trying to get loose. Thompson Kennels, salute, big brother. Asiatic soldier, what's good, big dog? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, we're approaching We're approaching that, uh, that time for us to kick it off, man. Peace and love to everybody in the building. Um, also, if y'all weren't tracking, Saturday we're gonna be airing the videos for those who submitted videos for the Digital Dog Show, and we'll be having taking votes for over the course of a week. There will be no individual judge; it'll basically be People's Choice Awards. If your dog wins, it's because the people like what they saw. If your dog did not win, then obviously you still got great dogs, but Everybody got their own swag, and it's a majority rules thing over here. Yes, sir. If any of y'all got puppies or y'all trying to let something go, Please, please, please uh, put it in the chats because I've been getting a lot of emails. People think I like actually got like got dogs like that, y'all. I got maybe five dogs that I actually like control the movement of. And so it um please, 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 if y'all got something available, like uh put it out in the chats and put them out there. I know we're not puppy peddling over here, but uh, I just don't I don't I don't really deal with or have a lot of puppies to, to go around like that. So I definitely will share y'all stuff and uh, promote your stuff because if I if you in here, it's probably because I, you already know I rock with you the long way anyway. So ain't even you know enough said on that, brother Thompson. I, uh, I'm not using YouTube currently right now, but you already know you're gonna be a moderator on this channel because uh, this channel wouldn't exist if I didn't get expired by your channel, uh, brother Ram. If you don't have your moderator thing, I can't see it because I'm using the Streamyard thing, but. Um, Y'all already know, man. Y'all OGs in the game, man. Ain't even a question. Anybody who got a problem with it, I don't care. Uh, it is what it is. Yes, sir. Ram, uh, once I put the link out, Ram, I wanted you to get in here too and kind of share your knowledge on uh, the protection side of it because uh, a lot of people don't even know that. You know what I'm saying? But the brother Ram is a is a superb uh, dog man all around. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I don't want to. Uh, his knowledge is not negligible. You know what I'm saying? You got you got to let it be known. Dickie Foster in the building, y'all. What's up, Dickie? Longtime supporter, big time advocate of the breed and advocate of the movement. Yes, sir. All right, y'all. It is zero eight hundred. We're gonna kick this thing off. Good morning, everybody. It's your boy Dre at Samurai Kennel, and today. 
we're going to rock with y'all and we're going to talk about some different topics that I want to talk about. And then I'm going to open up the channel and uh, anybody who wants to jump in can jump in on the live and we can just pontificate and share ideas uh, as long as it's a positive vibe. And even if it's not a positive vibe, then we can get your ass up out of here. Um, today is May 10th, 2023. And this is Samurai Candles Wednesday morning coffee talk. And honestly, this morning, y'all, I'm drinking on muscle milk because your boy is trying to get back in the gym. I missed a couple of days. Oh, man. Uh, let me pause right now. My brother, Arturo, Arturo Limon, is in the building. Uh, Art, I'm sorry about the loss of uh, of Maya, man. Man, uh, prayers up for you, bro. That was a phenomenal dog. And I actually uh, had the pleasure of having the offspring off of Maya on my yard. So um, shout out to my brother, Art. And... Uh, We'll be checking on you this weekend, bro. I'm going actually to see Samurai Kettle 601 to drop up a puppy. And uh, all right, I'll be checking on you, brother. All right, y'all. So as, as y'all know, we like to structure the show and it's very basic structure. So today's topics on the live today are going to be dog training theory, the Samurai Kettle's dog training theory, the four commands that you must teach your dog, which are sit down, stay in a recall, types of safety dogs, and then we're going to close this thing up with what the difference is between a guard dog, an attack dog, and a protection dog. All right, y'all. So to start this thing off, let's talk about dog training theory. Man, uh, the first thing I can tell you about dog training is the one thing that two dog trainers will ever agree with is what the third dog trainer is doing wrong. And that being said, I don't argue my points with other dog trainers. I don't argue my points with other dog men. Uh... I simply state what I know, what I've seen work for me, right? Oh, blessings, all right, no problem, no problem, big dog. And um, what I've learned uh, over time is that what worked for you may not work for me. I've seen people take their dog when they have a house dog, it pees in the house, they put his nose in there and pop it, and the dog can learn that way. And I've seen people who just have a really good regimen of feeding their dog and then taking it outside immediately and let it feed and poop. And the dog learns how to pee and poop in the house that way. These are uh, these are individual these are individual styles that work great for different people. Two hundred twenty high reps. <laughs> um, Tom's out there wilding, but uh, yeah, man, these are these are basic things that I've seen and I've heard over over a time period, and I just wanted to like. Talk about my perspective on it because uh, I think I, I think I may have misconstrued the game. Um, I love the I'm a I'm a dog trainer who happens to only really like the American Pit Bull Terrier. Uh, so I advocate for the breed, but my my purpose and my my intent or what I what I think I bring to the game is the dog trainer aspect of it, like kind of the science behind it. And by mis by misinterpreting that for for almost two years. I'm trying to right some wrongs, but also share that knowledge for those of y'all brothers who have uh, American Pit Bull Terriers, specifically those who have the high drive dogs, because um, these dogs, I, and I'm, this, this is written, I, a lot of my stuff is referenced. Well, Mr. Richard Stratton said the best working dogs are game dogs. And that's like true, like actually been, been pitted game dogs. And so using that logic i took that and i applied it to my training strategies and if you look at my my shorts that i had this past week you know uh 500 for five rep good god but um my my strategy is to simply take the knowledge that's already out there and move the the game forward with it and it's crazy that like i got several people in, in here that I consider my, my brothers, but I got three mentors in my chat right now. You know what I'm saying? I got I got Apache, I got Thompson, I got Walk em Down Ram in there. And two years ago, man, during the pandemic and everything, I was watching these guys, their channels, man, like, man, I never meet these people. You know what I'm saying? So I just want to get that, that kudos out there, that shout out, you know. But I also want to say that these guys have the dogs that can do the work that I'm trying to accomplish. Uh, I see a lot of guys with, they, they buy American Pit Bull Terriers and they lack the traits that I would be looking for. Because the same traits to make a dog a good box dog are the same traits to make a dog uh, a good working dog in general. I'm not going to say a protection dog, even though that's what I like to do. But a dog that will chase a flirt ball, you can use that same drive to get it to, to do other work. 
You know what I'm saying? The same dog that hit a spring pole for two hours, that dog can focus on you while you're training for two hours. And these are these are traits and things that you need. Now, moving forward, what I plan to bring to the game is I plan on sharing the Samurai Kennels way of dog training, which exclusively with American Pit Bull Terrier breeders and other terrier breeders as well. On Monday of this week, I was contacted by a friend of mine who owns a giant schnauzer. Um, another another great dog for working, but uh, I just don't care for the, the hair and the fur. But um, they're going to be I'm going to be helping them and mentoring them with the Kohler method of dog training, and uh, hopefully they'll share that that journey with you, so I can show y'all what I'm able to what I'm able to bring to the game, and you know, uh, really just uh, help out with 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 the management of the dogs, because uh, one of the things that I've noticed is that. Uh, aside from just the, the real the real bulldoggers out there is that the uh the novice guys they need they need some kind of structure and i think the training aspect of it is the structure that the novice guys including myself need to manage these dogs uh effectively now that being said we're going to talk about dog training theories dog training theories for me they apply they apply with uh purely positive dog training balanced dog training and uh reactive based dog training and i've talked about these before so i'm not going i'm not going to go into detail about those but at samurai kennel i developed a new strategy that i'm uh that i'm kind of playing close to the chest but i will tell you that it's a, there's a fourth strategy that i want to use that it uses the other two strategies but i've added something to the mix and uh a little bit about what, what i'll talk about it is is without giving away too much what it do big dog big a and Paula in the building my brother my brother uh, one of the things that I did want to share with y'all is that uh, I found something and I, I've kind of unlocked something for me that works with my dog specifically, and that is bond training. And uh, that right there, that's the only thing I'll, I'll ever charge for in the future. You know what I'm saying? If you want to learn how to Kohler train, uh, I'll charge you for consultation, but I'm not going to charge you to train the dog or anything no, no more like that. That's on the market. Uh, purely positive dog training, that's on the market. Uh, balanced dog training, that's on the market. People have already marketed those. But bond training, if you really want to understand how to do bond training, it's uh that's that's my secret sauce right there you know what i'm saying it's uh pretty much exclusive to the samurai but uh yeah that's that's something that that i found and i was actually inspired by a, a bully breeder of all uh, would you believe it or not uh fit bully t fit and fit bully actually brought it up and it when he said it boom i had my aha moment and I, and then i saw it for myself and uh, i will answer this because uh there's a guy by the name of student for life dog trainer here on youtube and a student for life had asked me to talk about how I build my bond with the dog. So I'll go over a, a, a way to build a bond with the dog. One of the ways that I interact with my dogs or build a bond with my dogs is obviously through play. But the things that I do specifically are daily walks. And when I walk, I don't simply just walk and let things happen. Uh, Typically, every mile or every quarter mile, I'll stop and do a trick. Just one trick. I can sit. Or, oh, for sure. For sure, big dog. But um, just a trick, right? The daily walk, that's that's a way to build a bond. And I got you, big, big brother Ram. I appreciate that so much. But uh, yeah, man, that's um, that's a way. And uh, Student for Life, man, um, reach out ind independently and uh, we can chop it up, man. But uh, yeah, that's a good move. Now, uh, that's all I'm gonna say on that. Uh, but you'll see, you'll see the work. I'll show it to you. Now, the four commands that I wanted to talk about as we get into this show, we get we get it going is the sit, the down, the stay, and the recall. And the order of those are actually wrong in my opinion. So real realistically, as a dog man, the one command you probably really want to actually have if you if you're breeding American Pit Bull Terrier, the, the real American Pit Bull Terrier, is probably a good recall. Because man, if you got a yard full of dogs and and they haven't already hit each other, a good recall can save you a yard accident. You know, if you know that dog is gonna come when you call whatever it is that you say, you can save yourself a lot of headache and a lot of pain. Um, every yard accident I had. I could see it happening before it happened, but I couldn't get there fast enough. That's the truth. Every time something happened in my yard, I could I could see it developing and could not get it to happen. To, I could not stop it. Could not stop it. So uh, that I would say that's a that's the first command you should teach. That a recall command. Uh, there's many ways to teach it. 
I, I do it through bond training once again. Um, that bond training uh, is, 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 is exclusively preserved for my samurai, but uh, like I'll talk to you about it offline, but I won't give you the science behind it. I would just tell you like how I accomplished a specific movement, right? But the science behind it, that's mine. Uh, next, I would say uh, stay down and come, or excuse me, stay down and sit. Those are commands that I think are uh, are necessary for when you're walking, if you're going to be in public places. But if you got a dog that's, that's pretty much kept, like uh, kenneled and, and chained, those aren't necessarily, ne those aren't necessarily needed, but they're, they're nice to have, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, part of like building that connection with your dog and training is the more tricks you teach your dog, the faster they pick up new tricks, but also the more intelligent they begin to act. They begin to figure things out for themselves. Absolutely, big brother Ram, absolutely. But um, yes, sir. So I appreciate that. Yes, sir. Hey, for Big Brother Ram, well, I need it. I need you to jump on this live in a, in a minute. But um, the out, that's uh, I think that's important too because um, my dogs had a bad habit of grabbing stuff in their mouth, man, even like plastic bags and stuff in the park. And uh, yeah, and then my brother Soul say the heel command is on the list too. I think the heel is a little more advanced, but yeah, that's that's a, if if you're if you want to be a serious person with, about your dogs and have guaranteed like uh controls in place i think the heel command is needed as well the sit the down and the stay commands um i believe they're important for uh daily activities i'll give you an example i let saki in the house like saki is like my my saki is my protector right like saki is my protector but when i get ready to feed him like he turns into a nutcase and like being able to uh Brother Thompson said he, he he got to work on his training. He just go for the breaking stick. Exactly. But when you got a yard like you got, Brother Thompson, uh, with them high energy dogs, one thing they one thing y'all not gonna understand is when you have a high energy dog, like they do things that if you're looking at it on camera, if you're not physically touching them, you can't feel the energy, like the kinetic energy of them dog. Uh, and I'll give you an example. When I, when I grab Saki by the collar, if he twists the right way, and I don't have my uh, a firm wrist, he could easily break my wrist. Right. And I'm certain any of y'all who have ever had a high drive, really, really powerful dog can understand exactly what I'm talking about. And that's why I want to talk to y'all about training because a lot of new, a lot of new guys get into the game and the the dogs end up either getting left on the street and seen on TV with ASPCA cases, put in the pound because they can't handle them, or they just they just it, they never they never do anything with the dog because they're just like it's just uncomfortable. What's good, Crockett? Welcome to the building. Welcome to the building. But um, yeah, man. So for y'all, what I'm what I'm gonna do is, uh, the the brother Big A has uh has inspired me to um, we got this group down here in San Antonio, and they do they do Tai Chi in the park every Saturday. So what I want to do is when I get to Arizona, I'm gonna have my own group set up out there where we go where we, where we link up a train, and I'll just go live and I'll I'll I'll, I'll stream the training sessions. And I'm doing this like in a really grassroots way. I'm not gonna charge for membership at first. What'll first happen is it'll be like a uh, like a, a, a honor system. You know what I'm saying? You show up, I got a glass jar hat out there, and you throw some th throw some money in the hat, and we just train. You know what I'm saying? If I don't make no money, I'll make no money, man. But it's a um hey, I'm telling you, bro. Hey, big big brother Ram, I'm telling you, man, it happens all the time. And then don't don't let them see a cat or something or get excited, you know what I'm saying? My neighbor's got a boxer, and like y'all hear Saki hitting the fence, or whatever. That's because my neighbor got a boxer back there in it. And the boxer think he wanted, but he don't want it. But um, yeah, man, like it's uh that's big stuff. But uh as far as the training group, uh the San Marcano training group, it's gonna become a thing, man. You know what I'm saying? And uh the goal is to reach specifically dog people, but uh I'll take anybody, man. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's that thing they got at the uh the Statue of Liberty gives your poor, you're tired, you're old, you're hungry, you know, we take them all because uh it's it's two sides of the game. It's, it's it's those who who really about it and really want to take care of these dogs, and it's those who want to create discord. And the people who want to create discord, they can't do that when you have some structure and discipline in your life. It cannot happen. So um, I definitely wanted to uh, I definitely wanted to make sure that was that was out there and and pushed accordingly. All right, and then um, so the next topic I wanted to cover was uh, safety dogs. And the crazy thing about safety dogs is uh. I would say there's maybe six different like varieties of safety dogs, and it, and they they are as follows. So, I got I see guard dogs being a safety dog, attack dogs being a safety dog, and a protection dog. And I will cover this, and then I'm gonna throw the description in the chat for um 
anybody who want to jump on here, we can, we can just rap. You know what I'm saying? But um, as far as safety dogs, we're talking about guard dogs at first. And I would say that uh, from what I've seen, uh, guard dogs are typically molossers, man. You know what I'm saying? Like typically your molossers are your guard dogs. They're going to be your manor guards. They're going to they're gonna stand fast. They're going to hold it down for you. Um, if I had to rank them one through five, I would say that uh, out of the dogs, I've been personally bit by that I would consider guard dogs, the Pressa, hands down. Pressa Canario, hands down. Uh, I don't ever want to get bit by one of those again. Um, the Cane Corso is a close second. You know, uh, I would say it's a, it's like uh, the comparison is like a, a real American pit bull terrier to a staffy, a little bit bigger, maybe even a little bit more mouth, but just not as uh, not as agile and athletic. Um, number three, uh, bigger dogs. I would say more of a guarding dog, less less of an attack dog or, or a protection dog. I would say the the, the uh, Rottweiler, and um, I would say the Rottweiler is a balanced dog, got good size, power, and speed. And uh, we'll talk about it because like a protection dog is any of these breeds, but specific like things that they can uh, handle. Fact so, and then um. I think number four, I will go with uh, probably like a well-trained um, band dog of some sort. You know what I'm saying? And uh, a band dog actually can do probably all three of these, depending on how you cross up the blood or what you put in there. And then uh, they got these things called uh, the Borble. It's a it's a pretty good – actually, the Borble meets all three criteria, but it's so large, I would put it in the garden dog uh, – the garden dog realm and if y'all got your own list throw y'all list in the chat you know what i'm saying um throw your list in the chat because i would love to see what y'all thoughts are too because I, I these are what i've been exposed to what i've personally been bit by like put on a fat boy suit and been bit by and i know what it feels like and i'm telling you like that borble bite hurts the most but i feel like the dog that was gonna hawk you down on, on on the front yard before you get out the front yard is that is that a presser yes sir uh then I got to a list for attack dogs. Now, attack dogs to me are dogs that uh, are send away dogs. This is a dog where you came on my property, you ran, and the dog is going to leave my yard after you. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's going to chase you down the road a good, a good ways, or you know what I'm saying? It's going to hawk you down and, and, and get you. Uh, it's it's going to go for a long run with you, right? And uh, number one on my list, Dutch Shepherd. Number one on my list is the Dutch Shepherd. Like, that Dutch Shepherd is going um, to go out of his way to go, uh, to go hit somebody. And, uh, the, for the attack dogs, I would say these dogs I consider um, slightly unstable from the standpoint of they naturally come out ready to uh, to bite somebody. Oh, yeah, that can, I, but I've never been bit by a Kangol around. But, yeah, the Kangol, like I would say that's – um, I would be scared. I, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't take a bite from a Kangol. I'm just going to keep it G with you. Like it's it's a level – it's a le it's level to this, and the Kangol's at that level. I'm not taking a bite from a Kangol at all. And um, if you do like, you know what I'm saying? Like this dog is supposed to have the highest bite pressure of all dogs, man. Like I'm not doing it. Uh, the press, honestly, like uh, the press, almost curved me out, bro. Being real, real talk. But um, yeah. But uh, back to the attack dogs, man. The uh, the Dutch Shepherd and then the Malamar right behind it. Uh, so Asiatic Soldier asked, "How do Dominican Pincers? Dominican Pincers, I would say, is number four for me." Uh, they have a high intimidation factor, but what I've noticed with the Doberman Pinschers is depending on how they bred, they are, uh, they hit or miss. But the, the Dutch Shepherd, the Malinois, and the Beauceron, uh, even when they water down, they're still so, so high in their, um, yes, yes, sir. Uh, the Beauceron, the, the the Dutch Shepherd, and the Malinois—they're so high and they drive still, and they're so they're, they're they're just starting to get watered down. That even if you get a poorly bad, uh, poorly bred backyard one, you can still get one that's going to do exactly what you expect it to do. Whereas with the Doberman, like I've seen Dobermans that is like, you know, what I'm saying they 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 look like a Doberman, they they walk like a Doberman, but they don't act like a Doberman. I've seen washed out, watered down Dobermans, and I'm like, I'm not impressed. Uh, but I, I've yet to see a Malinois, um, even a even a even a crossbred Malinois, they won't put it in work, you know. Um, and then I'd say number five on there is obviously the German Shepherd, you know. Uh, Kareem, brother Kareem, no, I haven't. And honestly, I think the reason for that is I think the Dogo is a known dog for people in the, in the bulldog community. 
but it's not a like I I've never walked through a neighborhood next and seen somebody walking a, a dogo before. It's a, it's a I would consider it a pretty uh, rare breed here in San Antonio, Texas, and and where I was at in the Carolinas. Like I knew about it my whole life, but I just don't. I don't think so. And then, uh, as far as the Chow Chow, um, I grew up around the neighborhood with Chow Chows, and with the Chow Chows, they weren't the Chow Chows weren't chasing us down the street. Basically, uh, I never got bit by one for a bite suit. For, first of all, but um, the Chow Chows, uh, we walked past my neighbor. She had two purebred. I mean. Purple tongue chow chows, you know, and if y'all don't know this about chow chows and sharpays, uh, one of the indicative uh, traits of them is that they have a purple tongue for uh, that's considered like one of the one of the trademark uh, things of it. So if, you, if somebody tell you they got a chow that doesn't have a fat purple tongue, um, you might want to question that. But um, but uh, as far as the chow chows, they didn't really chase us. They were they weren't really chasing dogs, and I, I would I would class it into more of a guard dog. Like if you want to keep people out of your yard. You know what I'm saying? That's a chow, a chow chow can do that very easily. Uh, but as far as like uh, wanting to hawk somebody down or 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 sending a dog away to go get somebody over a, over a distance greater than a football field. Uh, <laughs> hey, brother Ram, when you get in here, I want you, I would I would love for you to share that experience because um, uh, I haven't had that bite. And there's a brother in the chat that wants to know about that. So please. But um, yeah. And then for protection dogs. All right. So for protection dogs, these are dogs that I would say they they can do all the work, but they're more balanced. And all right, uh, believe it or not, like the American Pit Bull Terrier is, is not on this list for me. Uh, I use them for this work, but I will. I'm not gonna try to. I'm not gonna try to size this dog. This dog was not bred for the intention of protection work. I'm going against the grain when I do the stuff that I do with these dogs. Are they capable of it? Yes. Do they have all the attributes of it? Yes. But I would say the number one on my list for a protection dog would be the American band dog. All right. Uh, the proper cross of a band dog, because you can take you could take man, you could take a purebred American pit bull terrier and take it to a presser, and you could have a dog that is that can that can run and go get people, but also is big enough to keep people off your property. And um, a great example of that is uh Mr. Lee Robinson over at um over at American Sentinel K9. Now I know some people some people don't rock Mr. Lee, but what he's doing, his dogs over there are are quite phenomenal, and he's using uh, some nice lines of American Pitbull Terriers. <laughs> Thompson said, <laughs> oh, "Man, hey, if you shave a Chow Chow down, it's just a Sharpay with fur." Hey, y'all, salute, brother Vinny, brother Vinny in the chat. But um, yeah, man. So uh, I would say uh, for protection dogs, American Band dog. Uh, I personally think, depending on how it's bred, uh, the German Shepherd can fit two criteria. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I know that they have uh, mm, I know that um, the American so Americans have, have ruined every breed, all right, except okay. for the Pitbull Terrier. We do, that's the one thing we can we can actually say that America does right, but um. The American Shepherd, the American German Shepherd, whatever you want to call it, and Google it, a King Shepherd is how, is what we do to dogs, right? But I would say the the Eastern German German Shepherds, and if you if you want to look it up, Eastern Germany and Western Germany, they had they both breed shepherds, but uh, the body and color patterns are slightly different. And the Eastern German Shepherd is typically used more for pol pol military and police work, whereas the Western German Shepherd is still used for herding in some in some aspects, right? But an Eastern bred German Shepherd, um, I would say, is number two because it has size, stamina, and um, stability. Uh, I personally owned and dealt, dealt with Malinois and Dutch Shepherds, and they are not stable dogs. Like my, I didn't have to teach my Malinois to bite people, okay? And I'm gonna post some of my, some of my training videos with my Malinois on my on my Sunday on my Sunday videos, my wrap ups, so you can see like he naturally wants to bite people. He's naturally apprehensive, and like. It was scary walking him in public sometimes because I'm like, man, like this dog is a liability. This dog is 100% a liability. And uh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Built for it tough, man. Uh, now I'm a Dodge guy. And I know you're a Dodge guy too, but hey, that, that's a good analogy. Um, but yeah, uh, I would say number three, for uh, just protection dogs in general, like a good protection dog, uh, y'all don't 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 crucify me for this, but 
a well bit or well bred XL classic bully would would can do the work. And the example I'm gonna go off of is before the chat go crazy. Uh is there's a brother by the name of Larry Broadenax, and he had a dog by the name of Trauma. He built his whole training strategy off of this dog called Total Trauma Training. YouTube it. Um, I would say that dog is a it was a great balance. Now, mind you, I don't see the American bully as having a real place because there's a there's a breed to, everything you want to do with the American bully, there's a breed that can do it better. But what he did with his program and what I saw, uh he did a great he did a phenomenal job with that. So uh, that's why I would put it at number three on there. Um, and also, just so y'all know, I have a bias against long hair dogs because if you ever owned a shepherd of any kind, man, like uh, that, that, like they call them, they call them German shedders as a joke, but it's a real thing, man. Like, like grooming on them is completely different. Um, number four, and I grew up around these dogs too, so I had personal experience. I never been bit, but I saw them bite people, and it worked. It was very effective. Um, is the uh, Japanese Akita. Uh, the actual name Saki that I had for my pit bull came from my uncle. He bred Japanese Akitas and his dog was the, his dog's name was Saki. So uh, I, I named my dog Saki as, as, as an honor to my to my uncle that, um, that breeds Japanese Akitas. Um, if you've never seen a Japanese Akita, Google one. Uh, they get mistaken for Huskies and Malamutes all the time, but they are a completely different breed with a, comp with a completely different personality. Uh, very, very smart dog, very, very strong dog. And, um, and yes, sir. So, uh, and the number five, mm, uh, man, number five is tough. Uh, I'd have to get back to y'all number five, like there, cause uh, like them, like the, the American people Terry is pushing. It's just not on this, but it's pushing. It's, it's a real, it's really close in, in, in the game. You know, it's really close to it. But um, I'm about to uh, I'm about to uh, shoot this link to uh, to a couple of y'all. You know what I'm saying? See, so I can jump in there uh, for sure. And if y'all want to join the chat, join the chat. Give your opinion because uh, what I what I look at. If y'all ever followed the great brother Kevin Samuels, I liked his strategy. You know, he would get in there. And he would he would uh, debate. He would debate people and. Uh, yeah, the, the Akita will take a bullet. And two of them, the Akita was actually bred to to be like um to be like bear stoppers, you know. And so um I wanted to uh make sure that y'all uh were aware of those dogs. If you haven't seen them, please, please, please check out the Japanese Akita. The Rhodesian Ridgeback is a good one too. It is, but I'm I'm Bram, I think those are a little unstable too, personally. The ones that I've seen in person, um, super, super uh driven dogs, and I think that's why I find them a little unstable. Because there's a level of drive where a dog, almost like stupid game, and I don't not compare drive to gameness, but um, the dog can be so driven that uh, that it's not healthy, or that it can do things that are that are destructive simply off a of drive. Uh, and I, that's not something I look for. I look for a little bit more control over over the animal. Um, let me see, uh, brother Soul. Let me get you in here. Welcome to the chat, brother. So, top of the day, I'm good, brother. Top of the morning, bro. I uh, I had the pleasure of uh, seeing your live yesterday, man, and you uh, you are you you hit some some major topics, man. And uh, one of the things that you said on on that on that topic was uh, it kind of it kind of goes with what we're talking about today was does everything have a soul, you know, and um. When I talk about like bond training and everything, like I mentioned earlier in the episode, man, uh, I, I I completely agree. But uh, I kind of wanted to like open up the floor and like you know open up that forum for you and uh, for y'all to get in here and uh, and for you to kind of pontificate and just you know share your thoughts on early this morning on this uh, Wednesday morning coffee talk. So you there? Can you hear me, brother? Okay, yeah, there yeah, we go. Yeah, there yeah. we go. Yeah. I had lost my connectivity over here. Can you repeat that question, brother? So uh in a in a short form, basically on your live yesterday, uh you had mentioned that um you believe that everything has a uh has a soul. Brother, so uh, also uh can you shoot brother Ram the uh 
the link real quick. But um, yeah, yeah. I, I, no I really like that you mentioned that everything has a soul and that you believe everything from the blade of grass to, you know, to the ant has a soul. And um, I wanted you to kind of elaborate upon that a little bit more on, on this platform as well. All right, I'm back. I'm back. I had to ask. I was just sending over that link. Um, can you hear me, brother? Absolutely, loud and clear. Loud and clear. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, I didn't, in the traditional sense, you know what I'm saying. I didn't, you know, I mean more like a level of consciousness, um, because you know it could be misconstrued based upon whatever value system you have. You know what I mean. Um, some people just think that spirit or soul is only allocated for humans but i think if every uh thing in existence um knows what his job is then it has a level of consciousness therefore it's divine you know you don't have to tell a blade of grass to be grass or for apple tree to produce apples so it's had an, it has an encoded level of consciousness which therefore you know what i'm saying that is, uh, in my opinion, a level of uh, divinity. So that's how I look at it. That level of uh, consciousness is what uh, Western ideology tries to depict as the soul. My brother, I appreciate that. And uh, Student for Life, welcome to the game. Brother Big A, uh, we saw you in there. Uh, we, uh, if you can, join back in. And Brother Ram, I think we sent you the link, man. But Brother Soul, I, I wanted to address that because um, one of the things that I found that, that coincides with that, that I've been using for my strategy to build what I'm trying to build, is this. I found out about the term epigenetics, and I, I'm not no physicist or nothing like that, but I found out about epigenetics, and I found that uh, one of the things that the DNA does that I didn't know it was capable of doing was for DNA, i.e., if you have a kid, right? And welcome, brother, big A. Big a if you have a kid, and let's say I'll, I'll use my, I'll use me, my father, and my sons for an example. For my father, I didn't grow up around my father. I knew my father when I was five years old, right? And my father was was a playboy. You know what I'm saying? He he had a thing for women. Women had a thing for him. And so growing up, my mom. Uh, would say things like, man, you act just like your daddy, you know, you act just like your father, but I didn't grow up around him. So these were, uh, these were, uh, there were blockers and, and accesses in my DNA that came from my father that they weren't, it wasn't, it wasn't nurtured into me, it was natured into me. And my, my oldest son, um, this past week, he, uh, he hit me up and he was like, dad, like, you know, um, my friend said I should shoot my shot. And mind you, he's 10. So he's like, uh, I, I shoot my shot. Like, shoot your shot. Like, bro, I know you play basketball and everything, but like, you know, what, what you talking about? He's talking about, like, he's talking about shooting a shot. At 10 years old, you know, he's talking about shooting a shot because this little girl trying to holler at him in school or whatever, you know what I'm saying? And so um, I don't encourage or, or discourage any of that, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, one, I'm glad my, my son is on, is on the up and up, you know what I'm saying? And he he on the right team, in my opinion. Yeah, but, but um, nah, man, these are things that just naturally, like, they naturally, they naturally hit him and, uh, Welcome, Big A and Paula, and uh, welcome down, welcome in, welcome down, Ram. Uh, right. But I would uh, essentially, so. you know how like that's that's kind of like how uh, some scientists believe that trauma can be carried through DNA or uh, past experiences. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Brother Ram, welcome, welcome to the building. Brother Big welcome A, welcome down, to the building. Big A. Salute, good brothers. Salute, good brother. Hey, thanks for having me up here. Man, yeah, yeah, it's a blessing, man. It's a blessing. I did want to get a Ram. I did want you to kind of talk about that dogo bite because there was a brother in the chat. Uh, also, Ram, you know what I'm saying? Just, just you know, uh, spit your game however you want to spit a big brother, but I, I'm also interested in that question as well. Oh, yeah, that dogo Argentine, the two I did catch, they both hit you right in the chest, but they was trained for personal protection, so they trained to put you down. You know, you got man biters, then you got man stoppers. Them big motherfuckers get on you and they going to stop you. They going to bring all the cur out you. But they had more of a pressure bite. And I think that's just due to they breeding because, you know, they, they meant to fight jaguars and shit like that. So they got a lot of crushing power behind it. It really didn't punch through my bite soup like that. Like how when I took a hit from the Neapolitan Massive, I had motherfucker punch holes through my shit. 
But uh, that fucking Dogo Argentine, it felt like uh, I was on the bench press all week, bro. <laughs> My shit was hurt. It was sore than a motherfucker. For real. Like, them hoes could bite. They couldn't kick. They don't chase you too fast, but if they get you, they like a shotgun. Like, I would have one of them just for the house for days. Like if I was going to my kids at the crib, I wouldn't even be. I'd leave the door wide open. I dare you to go in there. <laughs> <laughs> like them yeah. big motherfuckers bite in. They look real intimidating. Like that's one dog I didn't want to take a bite from because motherfuckers look like a big old giant white pit bull. That's a, a people biter though. He ain't trying to. He bite right. big cats and people. <laughs> facts, facts, man. Hey, um, also, brother Bram. Uh, if you will put in the chat the link for uh, the Game Dog Talk in your in your Instagram, man, because I'm an avid follower. And, you know, I'm a paid subscriber to, to the to the Patreon. Uh, whoever whoever got a wrench got to do it. It won't let me uh, drop it in there. But once you reach me up, I can. Yeah, I, I got it. I'll drop it. Yeah, in the chat. hell yeah, I appreciate that too, bro. Good looking. I'll yes, be sir, forgetting man. to self promote. I'll be promoting everybody else. Shit. Yes, sir, man. We, uh, we want to aggregate. We want to aggregate this community, man, because uh. Y'all brothers are the pioneers of this. We're the best people for that reason. Uh, brother Big A, I also want to get you some shout out and some shine time too. I want you to beat my brother Big A, who we taking over uh, Samurai Kiddos uh, two ten here in the next three months. Hell yeah, it's a little good brother. Nice to meet you, Big A. Top of the morning. Nice to meet y'all, man. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Loud and clear, brother. Cold, 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 cold man. I'm just happy to be here right now. You know, for real. Shit, ain't nothing wrong with it, man. Ain't nothing wrong with functioning with good brothers early in the morning. Get your day started off right. It's only 6.36 here, but I'll be up early, early, because I like to cook my kids breakfast and work out before everybody get up and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm tired, man. I just got off of work about a couple hours ago, you know, <laughs> late the overnight, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. So I'll be working overnight part-time, too, so I feel you. That shit is a whole different beast. Oh, man. Man, yeah. You got to wait for the kids to get out and go to school before you can even go to sleep. Yep, that time. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> for real. Yeah. What y'all got going on with y'all, dog? Now, see, uh, Samurai, you over there finna give up the good game on the barn <laughs> training. I was like, bro, don't. That was my whole secret of when I was training them. I would do them like I do the game, dog. It's just... There's ways you could bond with them. I ain't going to go into it because I don't want to mm-hmm. on accident give up none of your ways, but that's the way. That's why I was like, shh, you know what I'm saying? Nothing. That's where the money at, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, when I say I train a motherfucker dog and it'll be my dog, like, that motherfucker, you think I raised him. You could have just dropped him off and come get him in two weeks and he going to be looking at you like you the op. <laughs> hey, so, Ram, uh, hey, Rasta Man Boone speaks on that shit in depth, bro. Uh, Y'all be missing so many nuggets. Yeah, I wanted to um, I wanted to bring that up, man, because uh, one of my mentors in the game, he an old school dog, man. Like I said, when, when he passed away, I'll share his I'll share some of his knowledge with y'all. But right now, like, uh, oh shit, rest in peace to the brother, man. No, he's still here. What I'm saying is, like, he, I, I, he's he's a family member, but I fear this man so much. I'm, I won't even speak his name. Cause I, cause I know he don't do that public stuff. He don't do this. Hey, yeah, stuff. keep it like that, bro. That's that's one reason why I respect you, like how I do. Cause you don't be putting motherfuckers out there, you know. But, yes, sir. I appreciate. And that. They can I tell want, you something, and you ain't gonna tell the world. I do want to share this with you, though, Big Brother Ram, and uh, cause I I learned this from him, and uh, one, first of all, we are gonna say this is never to be uh. What's that? What's that disclaimer you do, Ram? Can you? Do hey, man, this shit is not intended for, nor should it be used towards in any illegal purposes or activities. If you is using it for that, keep that shit to yourself. Don't tell them you got it from here. Because if you do, and any of us get caught up in that shit, when we get sentenced, I'm stabbing you to the floor as soon as I see you on the yard. Now go ahead. All right. So I want to share a story with y'all from this mentor that, that, I, that I learned um, back in my younger days. Or, you know, this that cannot be confirmed or denied, but uh, one of the things that I would do is, or that, that I would imagine I would do is um the night before we would go out I would actually take the dog and it would come in the house and you know we would sit on the couch and watch tv together and you know it, it, it was just my buddy you know because um I've always believed I've heard the stories about the jeep dog and like I always bring up jeep because I think that's just a prime example of how a bond can make a what some people would call a curve uh you know uh 
turn out better than the dog that the, like the home. Yeah, that bond override that curve because Maurice yeah. did call him back into the box. Like, yes, you know, he's getting that mouth put on him. Like, oh man, I'm about to exit stage left, even. And Carver was like, nah, man, we homies don't do me like that. And he fucking heard him. It's going by what motherfuckers told me who was pit side. Like, he heard him and got right to work. Like, came back from behind and went one. <laughs> when I heard that, I was like, that bond shit is real, bro. <laughs> you yeah. can call a motherfucker back from the grave. And he'll take his last breath for you, you know. But that bond gotta be real, like the brother uh Soul Power was saying, Roster Man be speaking on the OG. Like he lived by that, but he was real successful from doing that. Like he had way more good dogs than curves. And if they was curves, he wouldn't know because they wouldn't quit on them. <laughs> yeah, he hey, was bringing the best out of them. Uh another thing I saw was uh, and this happened with my Malinois, man. And I, I want to say this is like this is the this is my lower self speaking, but I got mad when this, when this happened. My Malinois used to try to bite everybody, everybody that came through the neighborhood, everybody that came to my house. But there was this old lady in my neighborhood, and he got loose one day. Uh, I had a prong call, and the, and, the, and, the, and the links came undone, and he ran up on this old lady. And I truly believe she was so pure that this dog that I would have snarling and slobbering at the mouth trying to bite people. She started petting my dog and talking to him like it was her dog. And I I was mad and jealous about the situation, but I think that has a lot to say about um a person and, and the aura they give off. Animals can animals can feel that. Yeah. Hey, I say she had that wolf in her because uh that yeah. <laughs> Maybe I do that to my dog, they shut the fuck up. So I got that Rougarou in me, right? <laughs> yeah, I pulled that Rougarou out in the baddest dog. You gotta be like, wait a goddamn minute. This motherfucker growling like me. Hold on. Hey, Samurai, that bitch was a liking, dog. <laughs> Hell yeah. But you gotta get like deep in your throat with you, man. Pause. But yeah, that, that wolf growl come from your soul. And she probably had that, like, it was like, bet you want to meet. <laughs> she probably was a bad motherfucker at her time, but he just respected it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It but dogs be knowing, like you were saying, dogs real. know, like, for real. Dogs know. A couple good dogs, motherfucker, I didn't had then people come over to the crib I just met, they don't like them. I don't never even deal with them no more because they some fuck motherfuckers. And the dog was telling me, like, motherfucker dog who don't usually, you could steal trying to bite you. You a piece of shit dude, you know, listen to your dog. Uh, yeah, a funky bitch real. in there talking about get rid of your dog and you even think she ain't shit and the dog don't like her, listen to your dog. <laughs> Facts. Yeah. Hey, I learned that lesson the hard way with dog thieves, man. My dogs would tell me who the thieves was. Yep. <clears throat> For real, it'll be the nicest dog be tripping. He'd be like, why is this nigga acting like that? He acting like a mountain water day. He, yeah, you know, these niggas ain't no good. Get these motherfuckers up out of here. Yeah. Dogs and babies. Yep. Yes. Yes. Except ugly babies. Ugly babies. Just <laughs> ugly. Yeah, ugly babies be haters, bro. They be hating like mother. Yeah. Like they you, be jealous you, when the pretty babies be, be getting held to them. Exactly. That's how you know the ugly shit be real. That's that genetic download y'all was chopping on before I hopped on. Mm -hmm. The ugly mm -hmm. spirit downloaded into that old man baby face ass little motherfucker. Or mm -hmm. looking like a uh, mog white that got wet and fed after 12. You know, that's a yeah. grim. Oh, grim. <laughs> oh, grim. I'm hey, glad my kids came out beautiful because I be talking shit, boy, about these motherfucking kids. <laughs> yeah, that baby that was born with that one tooth. No, <laughs> born with a tooth. Like, nigga, you have a big boom. Came out with teeth. Little sharp ones. <laughs> Hey y'all, um, the brother Big A man, he had told me a story, and, and Big A, uh, I don't, I ain't gonna say the names, but uh, would you mind sharing that story yeah. about Fifty, you know, and like how he put, how he got down with his owner and everything in that in that, in that, in that squabble? Yeah, so uh, the one of one of the uh, dog men that I really got most of my game from, uh, I and I got a dog off of Fifty also. Um, he had got Fifty when Fifty was like. Uh, I want to say three months old, and the the month that he got fifty, he was doing his bonding and stuff, and you know he wasn't sure about fifty, and uh, he got in a situation where uh, 
these three dudes were trying to jump him. And uh, 50 at three months jumped in the game with him and, <laughs> and was trying to fight with him. You know what I'm saying? And, and from, that <laughs> on, from, from that point on, he put all his time into 50. You know, um, that was his that was his telltale sign. That was, you know, and 50 was a real good dog, you know. Uh, that was a, a real good, uh, real good job. You sound like he was smart, too, to figure that out at that young. Like, I just oh, met yeah. this nigga, but he fucked with me. I fuck with him. He in danger. Like, shit, let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I learned a lot. I learned a lot from him, too, man. Uh, he, had a, he had a yard with about 30 dogs and whatnot. And um, he used to keep his 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 main dogs on the chain, and the other dogs he you know he he you could kind of say he was a puppy peddler to a certain extent, and most of his pups he would have off the chain. They'd be running around. He stayed in the trailer park at the end of a road, you know, where it was just him, and uh, he would have his his pups running off the chain, and he would feed his pups. Um, you know, just regular the cheap dog food. He get a, he get like a fifty pound dog bag uh, of food and just cut it and open it up and just leave it on the ground. While his dogs that were on the chain, they had a house. Uh, they had um they had a house. I'm messing with this dog right now. They had a uh, a house. You know, he give them water and, and feed them top top notch food. Now the pups would you know run out run around in the yard and. Uh, of course, they would try to run up on 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 the good food, and it would be a situation. And uh, if the you know if the pup got the best of them, he'd take that dog off the chain and put it put it in the back and let the pup take his house. Hell you know? yeah! Earned <laughs> <laughs> that spot, and, little homie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it kind of kept it kind of kept the yard on on you know on um. How can I say it, man? They, Perpetual. They kept he kept them yeah. in rotation. The dad gone and the, the, the new one improved is here. That's how, that's good. Like yeah, yeah. And uh, fifty was his dog. He he would feed whatever he ate. He fed fifty. You know, fifty stayed in the house and would move around. And when you would come up to the house, no matter who it was, fifty would come right at you. And if you really knew who it was, you'd have to yell, "Hey, fifty! 50. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 50 like, it's not. me, homie. Chill. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, 50 was a real good dog, man. I learned a lot from him, too. Yeah. <clears throat> How long yeah. did he have him for? 50. He had 50 for, uh, last time I talked to him, 50 had got hit by a car and died. Um, Because that was a problem that he had whenever he would leave the house. 50 would get loose. And be running the streets looking for him, you know. And uh, he had moved to a new spot, and um, he said uh, Fifty had got out and somebody hit him, you know. So, uh, but he had Fifty for about Fifty was like eight years old the last time I I saw Fifty. So yeah, he had him for a good man. Nah, that sucked, man. I be wanting the good ones to be around for a long time. Best advice I say for that question you put on the screen is bee pollen. Give her a tablespoon every day for two weeks before her heat is scheduled to come in. And the hormones in that bee pollen should help her swell all the way up. She probably like my the dog in my avatar right now. That's champion old dog, one of my champions. Had a daughter off of him named Casino, and she would have crazy heats like that. This because her fucking, she had a lot of testosterone. Bitch would pee with her leg up and shit, and her heat cycles would be like a week long. So she might bleed lightly for two days and, and swell up. And if you miss it, you just miss it. But uh, yeah, try to be pollen out, bro. You could get that shit from Tractor Supply. Yeah, and, and as far as they try that out, as far as uh. Bonding with the with, with pups and stuff, man. I try not to to mess with the dogs when when I come in and I'm I'm feeling like uh real irritated, not with the dog or anything, just you know, because they can sense that. So, you know, when I'm in a real good, you know, I come in, I'm I'm feeling good, you know, the dog I like my interaction with the dog is completely different. And when I cut cause I, I notice when I'm trying to train or do something like that, and I, I'm I'm you know. I've had a bad day or something like that. It ain't the dog. It ain't, and it's not like I'm taking anything out on the dog or anything. It's just the dog. The reaction is completely different. 
Yeah, because you're not clear of mind, so your aura whole whole different color is giving off. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and uh when I when I and by me doing that, I notice like tremendously different results. I get a lot further, you know, on a good note than, than yep. you know when you I get further it. faster. You be like, damn, yeah. I got this shit done in 30 minutes today. What yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so if I'm in a bad mood or something like that, I just I just let the pup be a pup and just you know mess with the pup, play with the pup. But well, you know, I, the good brother was saying earlier, uh, you know, somebody do the tai chi like I do that shit every day too when I ground myself when I'm uh, out here in the front, you know, feeding yeah. dirt ground it, get a little tai chi off, man, in ten minutes, you know, just yeah. relax your mind, clear your mind, bro. Yeah, some type of meditation too, man. You know, yep. I'm working on that. I'm working on that myself. Or some good old head. Man, nothing <laughs> ever beat that. <laughs> that should have saved the world. It's not World <laughs> War Three, right in tracks. <laughs> For real. Yeah. Yeah, man. I, um, that's 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 kind of dope, man. I uh, when I was in Korea, I stayed in Korea for two years, y'all. And Damn, I went to this, you know, that's dope. I, yeah, I went for the. Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't my choice, bro. It was indentured servitude by far. But um, but uh, military, I, I man, take it. <laughs> yep, yep. Well, sure yeah. Was. And so um, while I was over there, man, I realized uh, one, I wasn't coming home when I thought I was coming home, and two, I realized I was too grown, man. And uh, that's around the time I decided I want to get real serious about this dog thing. And um, so I, I took a weekend, took a weekend of leave, and uh, I went off into the mountains, man. There's no, there's no lie, man. It's gonna sound crazy to some of y'all, but some of y'all might get this because I was, I was just too, I was too grown. I didn't even know how to, I didn't know how to play, man. Like I was going, I was going to parties and stuff and getting in fights just because I didn't know how to play no more. You know what I'm saying? I was. Well, I, I, too, I totally get that, bro. When too I hard. came home, it was like I was still on level four, man. Like it had changed, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So, because we rapping, bro. But um, uh, so what I did was the first day, I went on a, a completely water fast for twenty four hours. I didn't speak a word because um, I wanted, I wanted, I wanted to appreciate the value of words, and that's part of that's one of the things I'm thankful for was going through that twenty four hours because I didn't just stay locked up in the house. I walked through the city of uh, downtown Pyeongtaek and Songtan, and um, I just walked. So like people would bump into me or whatever, you know what I'm saying? I just wouldn't say anything. I was just off of looks and body language alone. I communicated for 24 hours, no food, no water. So I was hungry and pissed off. And then um the second day, I still didn't speak, but I uh but I would eat fruits and stuff, you know what I'm saying, to start start to cleanse, you know, what I mean? going into the third day, you know, coming back to, to a real diet. And on that second day, man, I went out into the into nature. Oh, by the way, uh this is in the middle of summer in Korea, and I didn't use any electricity or any uh I wasn't using my phone or none of that stuff either. It was, I just want to be a kid again, you know, because like when I was a kid, we used to go outside and play. And I walked out to the mountains, man, and this is no, no bullshit. I started grabbing dirt clobs and just throwing them and got dirty. You know what I'm saying? Just got dirty again, like like how you used to, you know what I'm saying? Your parents like, oh, man, you smell like outside. Like I smelled like outside when I came back in the house, you know? And um, I needed that, you know what I'm saying? I needed to reground myself. And when, Ram, when you said it about the Tai Chi, it wasn't Tai Chi, but it was connected back to Mother Earth, you know what I'm saying? And I yeah. think that's one of those things you got to do for them dogs to really respect you is you got to be clear, clear of mind and heart yourself. Yep. You can't be on no fuck shit asking them to put it all on the line. That's not fair. You know, yeah. they don't speak English, but they speak fucking life language, you know? Yeah. No, that's real talk. It's the same way, you know, you come home, you're irritated, <laughs> your kids in your face, your kids know to kind of give you back back and give you 50 feet. The same way, because they they can sense it. It's, it can be an ass whooping at any point of this moment right here. So they yeah, can, yeah, and I'm an introvert, so I'll be feeling that energy, man. Like I'll be picking my wife up for work, and she had a bad day. I mean, man, don't mm -mm, hurry up and get you home. Don't put that energy on me, cause it yeah. jump right on me, man. I'm sensitive yeah. to motherfuckers' uh attitudes and beings like that. Just coming from being a street dude, you gotta be on that shit. You got to feel the vibe, man, because if it's wrong, you out of there, you know? For real. The same women always say is, ain't nothing wrong with me. Yeah. Well, it ain't going to be nothing wrong with you once I drop you off and leave and go to my girlfriend house. She ain't tripping today. Yeah. I go to my apartment. I got a secret stash apartment, man. I'm bowing out. <laughs> 
Man. Yes, sir. Uh, so Ram and Big A, I gotta put y'all, I gotta put y'all head to head right now, but this is a, it's a positivity thing. Big Let's A, go. Big A got that um Big A got that thing in the garage, and y'all seen it in the in the training video, man. Uh I wanted to bring it out, man. I would love to see y'all lining things up one day in a, in a positive manner. You know what I'm saying? Just what is it? What do you got? Big A. <laughs> <laughs> I got I, I got a I got a uh 96 SS. The yeah. pilot. What uh, would you put a uh LS4 in there? Nah, man. This <laughs> I did everything else to it. I, I got a um three I got a 373 uh stroker in there, there huh? I mean, not 373. Nah, nah, nah. Motor stock, motor stock. But uh, I got 383 gears in the rear, second stage shift kit, uh, BMR front and rear sway bars, uh, BMR upper and lower control arms in front and rear, uh, boiler exhaust. Uh, shoot, I got a whole bunch of stuff in there. I got um, move front end. Um, you put the coilovers on there? Nah. Nah, I, I see. I for me, um, I've been around the car game for a minute, and the last thing I want to do is touch the motor until it's time to touch the motor. Because I know a lot of boys that jump in the game, and uh, as soon as they get their car, man, I'm about to put all this horsepower on this. I'm about to do this and do that. As soon as they get to messing with it, the mo- they can't get the motor right. Then all of a sudden, yeah. it's, collect- it's collecting dust. Yeah, they want to. <laughs> then they want to sell it. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, nah, yeah. bro. You did right though. You did the suspension first. You know, you be able to hook yeah. it when you do put some power on it. But yeah, uh, yeah I'll eat that shit up, bro. I, you know, <laughs> bro. <laughs> nah, I, <laughs> thanks. I, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't doubt it. But see, like for me, um, I try to keep it as simple as possible because uh, if I when I do tra- uh, change out the motor. I do another um, LT1 with a supercharger and just drop it in there. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. Well, I'll give you some free game. If you could uh, come across a, like a crash, the newer U-Haul, they got the 6.6 LS in there, the new ones. You can okay. get that in the computer and swap it right out and just tune yeah. the computer for uh, because it got a bunch of torque on the tune because they got to move that big-ass U-Haul. But, yeah, they come with big old 6.6s in them, bro. Uh me and my partner, we went in on the 2021 Camaro uh, LT1 and just pulled a uh, 6.6 out of uh, Crash U Haul. About to swap it out in there this weekend and probably just sell the other engine for some parts, maybe get some turbos and shit for it. I don't know yet. I'm either going to pro charge it or turbo it. Yeah, man. It's um, that, that turbo, I, I heard. Yeah, that exhaust, right? Yeah. Yeah, the turbo, it just recirculate the exhaust, clean it up, cool it down, and put it back into the engine uh, air intake manifold mm-hmm. for more boost. But, uh, yeah, I got uh, I got three engines, though. I bought a uh, recently a fucking 392. It just got it uh, bored and stroked. I got to put that back together. I had it together, but I forgot to get the piston ring, so I had to take it the whole bottom end back apart. So I'll fucking probably gap them shits tomorrow and put it all back together. And I got a board and stroke five seven and a uh, board and stroke six one. On the board and stroke five seven, that's my twin turbos. I got two ninety millimeter Gary turbos on that. And on the uh the six one is a nitrous, a big old shot of nitrous on that motherfucker boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that I I try to I that, another reason why I keep it simple is because uh. Shit breaks. You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm a mechanic, bro. That <laughs> just for that. I used to race my Escalade all wheel yeah. drive at the uh six two in there board and strokes with a uh centrifugal pro charger on there, the ones that look like a turbo. Yeah. Yeah, one of them, boy. And I fucking uh blew out the front end differential back to back twice on that motherfucker. This shit was five G's a piece. I'm like, I'm finna sell this motherfucker and learn how to work on these motherfuckers and went to school for that shit. Now I'm a badass mechanic. Yeah. Yeah, see, I'm not. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's no cost. You know? Hell, hell yeah. It's not that hard, though, especially on older cars. Like, you got the LT1 in there. 
And that's pretty much it's just like a fucking LS, bro. Just a couple little different shits. I think you got the Vortec in there. It depends on uh what year the 96 it came or what uh what month. If it came out in the early months, uh it got the uh LT in the later months it got the uh Vortec in it. No, nah, I'm L I'm LT. I'm LT. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. Nah, and the and the reason uh I ain't jump into fixing stuff, man. It's cause my my brother work on cars and whatnot. Oh it's yeah. Cause. But the thing is, when you start talking about tools, it's never ended. Never oh, ended. Man, hell no! I got tools all over the motherfucking place. <laughs> yeah, and I you know I mean I know boys that that you know got how they got a trailer park home, but they, you know and and it's, it's nice and whatnot, but like they tools. Is man, they damn got over six figures in tools and still looking to buy more. So I was like, nah, I ain't gonna open that door. <laughs> yeah, cause that shit get tricky, boy. Like, oh, I, I first started like I'm only gonna buy the basics. Now I'm like, fuck, I need a toolbox, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not and then you like a kid in the candy store, you know? Yeah, hell yeah. Oh, so fact, yeah. snap on my best friend because my partner yeah. tried to snap on the truck, so I'll be getting that shit at cost. I'll be killing yeah. it. Hey, yeah. uh, good brothers. Uh, Ram, I got, got a question for you in there, man. I, I'm kind of curious about this myself, man. And then, uh, Soul and Big A, y'all can jump on there as well, man. You know, I'm just, uh, I'm just, I'm just enjoying it, man. But it says, uh, Ram, would you recommend a PG600 as the last resort? Jet about to be four years old. Got to that, get her bread. Yeah, that's still pretty young, but uh, I would do that, but only if I had some extra uh, extra estrogen and a little bit of test to put her back on once you get her off of that, because that shit'll fuck up her heat cycle, bro. Like you really, like I would get that shit to an older bitch, like my uh bitch that just passed. She was seventeen off a of grand champion uh tackle berry and champion gigabyte. And I gave her some of that shit when she was 11 just so I could get one last litter off of her, you know? And the bitch only had two pups, but it fucked her cycle off for like eight months. And then it got all weird and then just stopped. I don't, I don't know if it's because she was super old, but I have heard the PG-600 will fuck a female up if you don't got, you know, it's like cycling off uh, if you was on the juice, bro. Hey, uh, what, what, were those two pups good? Uh, one was and one was a cur. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it was fifty fifty. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, man. Uh, uh... Hit up uh Tom Garner site. He got some shit up there. Uh, it was a little bit. Uh, it was pretty much like PG six hundred, but it didn't have all the fucked up uh hormones in there, man. Uh. Yeah, just go to Tom Garner's site though and check it out, bro. Man, I, I'm over here getting all this game right now. Cause my but yeah, you, you kind of want to be careful with the PG 600, especially on a young dog like that, man. You know, it might seem long four years you done raised it, but that shit go by fast, bro. You know, that four years he took, you could have went and got a bachelor's. That's how fast that shit go by. I just need I need a natural remedy because my bitch only had one heat so far and she too. You might have missed it though, bro. You just, you just gotta check them. That's all. Check them holes every day. Yeah, but I was expecting swelling because her first heat, man, she was looking like a damn baboon in the ass, and she ain't swelled up since then. Uh. Um, but always, I'm an advocate of taking them to the vet and get some blood work done just to see where their hormone balance is at, you know? She could fucking need some alkaline in her diet, bro. It could be something simple like she got a fucking, her pH balance is too acidic. You just got to level it out with some good old alkaline water and magnesium to help her properly digest the alkaline. Great point, great point. Um, so as far as the heat go, man, uh, I got some Migos, man, from down in uh down south of the border. They they sent me this 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 vitamin I use to bring my uh, my Frisco bitch in, man. And typically thirty days after bringing it, I can't spell it or pronounce it, but the brother sold it. What I'm talking about, man. It um, Akinasia. It, how you say that word again? Akinasia. 
Yeah, man. If you could put it in the chat, man, it worked for me. Um, when I was trying to get when I when I was trying to make the breed and, and bring my female to make sake, it uh it worked very well, very very well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I'm actually uh going to use some of them tablets today and see how it worked for me. Yes, sir. And then uh, also, man, um, another thing I used to do was I would uh. I would take my males out around the females, especially my males that, had, that I felt were were uh, very alpha males, and had them urinate and, and piss in that area uh, for the pheromones to help stimulate that heat cycle as well. I don't know if it worked or not, but uh, for me. If you got a bitch in heat, put them by each other, or whatever male, if you, the male you want to breed her to is on the yard, put them by each other and take him off his chain every day and let her walk up to her, let him lick her, you know? Male going to smell that coach and he ain't going to trip. You know, I, Red Jack used to let a bitch kick his ass, and he was a killer, like a one bite, you out of there killer. But a female, if Cooch was on the line, go ahead, because as soon as you stop, I'm going to slide right in. <laughs> so, yeah, I would try that before giving her anything, bro. You know, you don't want to fuck your dog up and be mad. You only got one breeding off of her. No doubt. Hey, uh, I got a question for y'all. Uh, any recommendations for like cattle fencing or anything? Man, I woke up about two this morning. Dogs going crazy. Fucking bull in my backyard, dog. Where the fuck you live at? Narnia? <laughs> 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 Fucking in my whole... I got a uh, my chicken coop. I have built up a pen so I can let my chickens out so they can free range. Motherfucker came through, knocked over. Excuse my vernacular, uh, brother Sam. Was it your bull? Hell no. Man, spit your game, bro. Spit your game. You, you yeah. got bulls in the wilderness, bro? Oh, cool. <laughs> I'm like borderline uh, country and suburbs. So, like, probably about a mile and a half from me, it's, it's farms and shit. Well, shit, half a mile from me, uh, my neighbors got fucking uh, llamas and whatnot in their front yard. So, yeah, man, it was about a two, three thousand pound bull in my in my fucking chicken corral this morning. So I, I threw something at it because my dog's going crazy. Then the motherfucker took off, but then he was like bucking up on me in the front yard. So I pulled out the Dookie Duke, you know, the twenty two, and I shot at him. You know, he took off, but wifey was like, uh, "Go get, go grab the slammy." I was about to pull out the twelve gauge. Hell yeah, big nigga! Like, oh fuck your deuce, deuce, nigga! I'll be back. I'm gonna yeah. spin the block. Yeah, that nigga said a bull in the front yard. I don't know what the fuck all that did, man. Hey man, man come, 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 come to Texas. Come to Texas, man. My whole my whole, I, I stay like I can look out my backyard. I'm looking at a farm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> man, I'm cool. Oh, cool. I don't know. My crazy yeah, ass probably would have seen if the bull and bulldog was real. God damn it, <laughs> hey, um, brother Ram. Yes, sir. Hey, can you uh, can you shoot brother Thompson the, the link, man? Brother Thompson over here dropping these these dimes and these, these jewels in his uh, in his uh, chat over here, man. Let's see, if we get that brother on here for, real quick. All right, yeah, I'll be right back. All right. Yeah, and while while it's on my mind, man, I uh when I was talking about fifty. And being in a yard, uh, 50 wasn't the best dog in the yard, but um, he, you know, whenever a situation would happen, you know, little yard situation, he would never let 50 lose. So 50 would always have that supreme confidence because he, you know, 50, you know, 50 ran the yard, he, and, and he wasn't the best dog on that yard, you know. And I learned something from that too, you know. And I learned something from you telling me about that too, because I'm not gonna lie to you, man. Uh, <laughs> my 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 best dog in my yard is what I make it. You know what I'm saying? Because of that yeah. story you shared with me. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I learned a lot from that, man. I, I mean, just sitting around all those dogs, because I this this happened for about I was around here for about three years, and I'd be out there practically every day. Helping him with, you know, whatever, because you know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm a student, you know. I'm sitting there learning. I'm, I'm hands on, kind of like uh, you when you had to clean, clean the, uh, clean the yard when you were um, out there uh, doing the uh, protection work. Yeah, you know? man. Yeah, man. I, I understood, man. Understood, big bro. Heck yeah. yeah. Hey, so, but with that bull, man, I did want to talk about the legalities behind that, man. Y'all know I'm a, I'm a very political person. Military hey, Thompson, I sent it to you, bro. Uh, check it. My bad, family. 
Oh, you good, big dog. But brother, brother, I'm telling you right now, in Texas, they will take you to jail for a long time for killing somebody else's livestock, bro. So uh, I, I know you said you got a thing, but be careful with that, bro. No, you're right. I, we actually, so the first time it happened, you know, wifey was all tripping and shit. So she called the laws. I don't fuck with them people. So they pulled up. So we actually spoke to him, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm walking the perimeter around the damn house to make sure uh, the bull wasn't still around here because my baby was going to be getting up and getting ready for school. So, you know, them, them dicks pulled up and um, got to rapping with them. They said everything is it's all good as long as if you feel threatened, you got every right to do what you need to do. So only thing, uh, like, how can you prove that I was or wasn't threatened? You know what I mean? You on my property. I'm stepping outside. I hear a ruckus. I got every right to lay you goddamn down. Hey, that's so, a fact, man. Make so sure you long. know your castle laws. Also, welcome to the chat, Brother Thompson. We got Brother Thompson in the house, y'all. Salute, Thompson. What'll do, Thompson? Yo. Oh, he, he dropped off. He dropped off. Yeah, he, yeah. Yeah, shit, he be out there in them sticks, boy. He yeah. should be on and off. He'll pop back on, though. Yeah. He could probably tell you what to do with them cows too, because I'm certain he got cows and pigs and all kind of monkeys and all kind of things jumping through his uh, through his, uh, his land out there in the woods, man. Uh, but yes, sir, brother Rail in the house, man. Shout out to brother Rail, uh, brother Rail, he a real one, bro. Brother Rail been rocking with his thing, man, and uh, I've been I've been following his program, man. Big shouts out out there. Um, but yeah, what what other questions y'all got for the for the panel, man? Because I, I I have a collective a, a conglomerate of minds here, man, and this is a great opportunity. Oh, there's brother Thompson, he back in there. Brother Thompson, welcome to the panel, man. What's up, big dog? Hey, how y'all brothers been doing, man? Y'all hoping my morning go by quick. Uh, yeah. What's up? <laughs> what it do? What it do? Fixing air conditioners behind a dirty advanced auto. <laughs> hey, Brother Thompson, you mind if I ask you a quick question on the AC? Go ahead, bro. All right, so I went to HVAC school, did my little thizzle, all right? I'm a little far removed, so my at my crib... My compressor isn't coming on. I'm thinking I got a capacitor issue. I don't have a meter reader. What would you recommend me to, uh, first thing to to do a repair without uh, any major tools or to identify my issue? What would you? You're gonna have to get you you you're gonna have to get a uh you don't have to spend a bunch of money on a high dollar voltmeter, but you can just buy a capacitance reader. They're a little bit cheap. They like thirty dollars at United Refrigeration if you got one by you. And you could check the microfarads on that that cap, but you have to be able to check the microfarads because it may be a 45, 5 slash or 80 slash. So the uh, only way you can condemn the capacitor is if you test it. Okay, right on. Appreciate that, family. How Anytime, old bro? Is your uni? So uh, how old how old is your uni? Uh it's a year. Okay, so you got the new uh 132A Freon in that motherfucker. So you shouldn't have no issues with that. Nah, uh -uh. it's a... Uh, it gotta be the cap then. That shit only a year old. Yeah, if the compressor if the compressor's not starting, it's either the capacitor or you when you like I said, you could check your contact. If the 24 volts is pulled in on your contact, the best bet is just to cop yourself a meter. Because that meter, it'll pay off in the long run because you could fix shit in your house with that meter if you trying to check outlets to see if your outlets is working and shit. So that, that little $60, $70 for a volt meter that reads capacitance, it'll be well worth it because then you could check your capacitor, check your contact and make sure it's sending the power to the compressor when the 24 volts call for it to come on. So, you know, you, you kind of blind without that meter. Yeah, I think uh, Harbor Freight still might have them on sale too, man. I bought one last month, bro. It was only like forty bucks, and that bitch check everything. I probably yeah, you can get them that check microfarads, mini volt, all kinds of shit, you know. But like I said, if you do get the meter, just make sure you get one that does capacitance. But even if you get just a, if you get that capacitor tested that I was telling you about, you still gonna need a volt meter if that's not the problem, because now you're gonna have to check power. And make sure that the compress the contact is sending power to it. So you right. might as well just get the meter and just kill two birds with one stone. You know what I mean? Appreciate that, brother. Is the fan kicking on when you cut it on? No, fan kicking on. So it's 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 calling for uh, uh you know on on the one twenty, but it's just like I said, uh, that that compressor wasn't kicking on, so it was just blowing hot. Yeah, air. it could be just a capacitor, like I said. Shit, you you if you want to just try to you know if you want to do replace parts. 
you can take a picture of that capacitor and just go pick up a capacitor. They like eight dollars. And just if you want, if you don't want to get the meter and shit, but I don't like guessing shit. You know, I like to know exactly what the fuck's broken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, before I had uh, left the company I worked for, you know what I'm saying? I had to uh, go shopping, so I got. Oh, I was gonna say, hell yeah, I got a couple caps on decks since I bought my crib yeah. last year. Yeah. <laughs> Cheap. And again, that I have, you know, I just slid it to my pop because he got a bunch of rental properties. So yeah, I need to go ahead. Matter of fact, I I even got one of them uh, ozone. Uh, clean the the little air purifiers, the ozone Jones. So I'm yeah, gonna that on as well. But yeah, appreciate that, brother. Anytime, bro. Thompson, you, like uh, I appreciate you coming on here and dropping this knowledge, man. But you might have to start charging for consultation. That's what I had to start doing, bro. <laughs> oh man, shit, man. I got so much side work, and I, I I got my business and shit, man. And I just give it out for free now because I don't be having time to do half the shit anyway. It just be like I'm doing these sixty hour weeks, man. It's starting to crush me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you going live this week or next week, Thompson? Next week, man. We've been trying to do it every other week, Ram, because everybody been so busy. Brown be busy, and then you know Fred be busy, and yeah. we was like, man, we we just gonna do it every other week and try to catch up with the brothers and stuff. But you know, I appreciate them for jumping in on there when they can. You know what I mean? Because I know everybody got a hectic life. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. I'm going to call OG later on today, this afternoon, chop it up with him. And salute to y'all brothers, too, man. I appreciate the consistency y'all be bringing with y'all show, man. For y'all, I was saying my last joint, man, I got a high appreciation for content creators like 78. Because that shit is a job, bro, to like to be able to get home and get that shit set up and get people on and, and be do it in a timely manner. That oh, shit is yeah. a, a, a full time job, bro. Like, I'm legit. having hella shit going on, but I'll say fuck it, you know, set some shit aside and just get it done, man. I like that shit, bro. Appreciate the accolades too, good brother. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. I always give credit when credit's due. I got a, I got a question for uh, Thompson and, and Ren. So check this out. If if y'all didn't have no dogs, nothing at all, and y'all had to start from scratch, you know. Um, with the knowledge that you have, what direction would you go, and why would you go that direction? Uh, as far as the breed or dog itself, like a different breed or going back to the same dog or something. Same, same breed, same breed. Oh man, I'm I'm going right back to that Boyle's crosses, man. Them Boyle's crosses did me right, man. I'm one of them yeah. old kind of dudes, man. I just I don't change shit if it ain't broke. I like my Boyle's crosses. And I like my Red Boy Jocko Termite dogs, you know. In this game, all you can deal with is what's been consistent for you. You know what I mean? Yeah, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Is there something that you would change? Uh, anything? No, no, not really, because the crosses is what brings the changes for me personally. You know, when I do my crosses and I want to implicate something in it, you know, I'm changing it. Because once I take a, a pure Boils dog and cross it, it's not a pure Boils dog no more. It's my rendition of what I wanted to put together. So, you know, Boyle's dogs, they look real small. They got the strength of a 50-pound dog, but they look 30-pound dogs. So, you know, I cross dogs in it that bring a little bit more durability to the party, and I get a little bit more size in it. So, you know, when I do crosses, those are the things I'm trying to implicate. So I try to get it to where I want it because I never was a person to say I just breed pure Boyle's dogs. No, nah, I breed Thompson dogs because I cross shit into it to make them the way I want them to make them. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, got you. Ryan, what what it do? Shit, man, I had so much success with literally damn near every bloodline, man. So I would just go to a motherfucker who was doing his do and pick like fucking two or three, maybe four pups from him, raise them up, or just go and buy some prospects. Like the bloodlines, I never really cared about bro you know i just cared about the good dogs man i didn't give a fuck how he was bred he didn't know how he was bred he just knew he wanted to fucking go you know yeah. so i didn't give a fuck how he was bred i literally had fucking winners and champions when wild side dogs was fucking getting shit on i had some badass wild side dogs motherfuckers with duck duck goose duck sauce was on sale when i pulled them holes out uh of course the red boy jocko dogs that's champion old dog in my avatar right now uh i had eli champion dogs uh some good ass bolio dogs some crosses so I, I would just get whoever got the good dogs man i just go get some good dogs and see if they was really good dogs bro yeah yeah Thanks. like literally 
every well, except like old family red nose and some of that old shit, you know, that played out. But everything that was hot when two thousands to two thousand and ten, I I had it whooping ass with it. I just I like to see, you know, I want to see. And that's how I know is good dogs is where they at, bro. No matter yeah. how they bred, good dogs gonna be where you find them hoes at, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's a good question though, because Thompson and Breeder, I was a handler and conditioner, so that was my whole thing. Like I bred my own champs and shit too before, but I wouldn't call myself no breeder, you know. What yeah. what Thompson yeah. do? That's some breeder shit. You feel me? I would never have that many dogs because there's not that many match dogs in the game. I only had room for match dogs, bro. So fucking ten, maybe fifteen tops. Now those fifteens. Probably five was brood, another five pups, and five is on their way to be champs or already a champ, bro. <laughs> yeah, I was asking that question because you know, um, you know, once you once you gain so much experience, you learn what 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 works, what doesn't work, what you know. Uh, don't do that, you know. what I'm saying, don't mess with that one. Don't you know? And, and just you know. Yeah, now there's some it. lines like you couldn't pay me to feed. You know, I wouldn't feed no goddamn Heinzel dog these days, because all the good <laughs> Heinzel breeders, it ain't no more good ones, bro. The ones who got the good ones ain't coming off of them. So I get your money back. You ask me to feed one of them hoes. <laughs> I'll give you your money back, your dog back, and I might send you off with a good dog. Help you get rid of them motherfuckers. <laughs> Right, it's one right. of them kind of things, brother, man. Shit, you get scarred in this game, but them scars don't heal. When you get a bad motherfucker and you paid a lot of money and that motherfucker ain't shit, boy, that shit scar you for life, boy. You be traumatized as shit. You, oh, yeah, man, I ain't never I, fucking with that shit. I never feed another Earl Jr. dog ever in life. I had seven of them hoes straight from time. All them motherfuckers <laughs> is right in the curb pile. Right. Yeah, man. So I never get you better not have Eli Earl Jr. nowhere in the pet. I don't want it. <laughs> you bad luck with it, bro. I used to be like that with the Frisco dog. Every Frisco dog I had quit. Until oh, I see the real oh, Frisco man, dog. Man. <laughs> <laughs> you think like, it was the Lee Ling shit, Ram? Because the only stuff that I really heard that was stuff in Lee Ling was that shit, boy uh, pack it up like a motherfucking moving company and bone out on your ass. <laughs> That's a funny bloodline because everybody got so many different inputs on Frisco. Some people say they just wanted through the Lee Ling and then you got the curb piles. Everybody say, man, that's one funny bloodline where I could never get like a well, consistent I mean, opinion on across the board. I repeated the Frisco Lee Ling breeding so much, man. Like what? The, like the first two breedings, there was some good dogs in there. But the rest of that shit, it just played out, man. Like you wore that bitch pussy out or something, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, it took me years to find a good Frisco dog, but when I finally seen it, I was like, oh, this is what you motherfuckers like, huh? Bet. And I wouldn't get it <laughs> pure steel just because I had bad luck, but I, I had it crossed with some Midnight Cowboy shit, and that shit was the truth, because you putting a different shot of the Eli back with the Eli that Tom had rocking. Yeah, that Midnight Cowboy stuff is official. That shit go real good with them boys dogs, too. Oh, yeah, hell yeah. I got a whole fucking Chinaman clone in the back. You feel me? He look like a small Chinaman. And he got the heavy Frisco, but he got the Midnight Cowboy in there. Yeah. He a uh, great-grandfather to great-granddaughter breeding. The best I've seen yeah. with that cross with that Frisco stuff is the the Frisco Maverick stuff, man. I think that Maverick slow stuff brings something out of it that, that, that uh, they just ain't there by itself. Yeah, you putting that that good Eli back in there with it. I say that in a unsung cross. These motherfuckers is good. The Frisco Hammonds. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I heard about that. That Hammond shit. I mean, you just go through the curves and get to down to the good ones. The good ones gonna be like motherfucker. People be sleeping on Gary Hammond stuff. That stuff crosses well with a a, a couple of different lines really well. But I don't know it's, if Gary. It's like a, a People pure kind of slept on Gary or what? Bro. It's a pure line to die, bro, bro. And it's, it's just like any other big name dog, uh, man, bro. You're going to get the good. You're going to get the bad. Like, you know, like I'll fuck with y'all. So if I was a big name dog, man, I'll take y'all to the side yard. But motherfuckers, I don't fuck with it. We're coming to the back. 
<laughs> this shit Walmart <laughs> over here, but on the side, you, you like Garner like, now. Hey. You like, you has that Garner plate. Yeah, you can see everything in the front. You can't come to the back, nigga. Yeah, that's yeah. a five. That's a five thousand dollar party to walk back there, brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you are gonna walk back there? And it's gonna be party time when you walk out that bitch. You feel? Oh, yeah, you gonna see some Mexicans with the bucket hats and shit, with the cowboy boots Hell and shit. Yeah. yeah, you about you about to walk into the wild wild west back there? Yeah, that's where the real dogs <laughs> at. So yeah. No, I ain't knocking time either, you know, just because I had some bullshit nice. from him. That motherfucker put out good dogs more than anybody consistently. So I don't bad talk nobody, man. Shit, he's probably the leading breeder in the United States of America, man. I mean, you oh, can't take man. that from him. I do, but <laughs> as a breeder, I look up to him as, as a breeding tip. No bad mouth nobody, but fuck the macho butt dogs, not the macho buck, but the macho butt. <laughs> the ones who get bucked. Fred like, ain't never gonna let that shit go. Fuck no, that motherfucker trying to call the FBI on me, man. Fuck this. Lucky <laughs> Fox, better not see him in no Vegas fighter. We gotta line that up. I'm gonna kick you in your balls or something, motherfucker. Rev said the beef ain't never gonna die. Hell no, man, forever scratching on that motherfucking macho butt. And the cold part, the dog that fucked the macho butt dog. Was a goddamn macho buck dog from the camp that the macho team macho butt don't like. That shit was the perfect fucking. It was a puma dog fucking a a goddamn uh bag man dog. Yeah, that scarred me for life. I still can't get that image out my head. That was too that much. That shit to is funny. <laughs> I even emailed yeah. that shit too because you know my troll level is on uh final boss level. <laughs> Yeah, nigga, you got infinity troll level on that shit, boy. That... <laughs> I ain't yeah, never I... seen no shit like that in my life, bro. <laughs> I, man, I didn't think a male could tie to another male. But I ain't never is... seen that shit. Man. I was like, man, this shit got to be fucking um, 3D. Babies altered this shit. Uh, this is the bad <laughs> so... man shit? This is what the bad man do? You mean butt man? I had some courage before in life, but I ain't never seen a cur like that, boy, because they'd have been Bruh, buried just like that, you, stuck man, together. The, my dog was, <laughs> was a one-time winner I thought was going to be a cold dog to my grandson, a champion buckshot, tried to fuck him. He wasn't going for none of the butt stuff, bro. <laughs> that thing turned into a killer, like, as you should. Anyway, you, if Steve Urkel was going to get butt fucked, he should fucking nut up. You kill everything in the room. Like any man would, man. he ain't just the same prison. Them two dogs in the living room. You yeah, better man. get off my back. Yeah, I'm a boy, Damon. Yeah, I'm a boy, Damon. That's one of them moments. Damon, and shit, I'm a man. boy. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the mother you know shit. Yeah, boy. And my partner said that he'd have been in the hole just like that, stuck together. I said, "Oh shit!" He's out of folded them in half and put them right there. Man, straight up, it should look like oh, a big man. bull sandwich, nigga. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> two free. Oh man, why did you bring that up? Well, this well, because we said oh, we ain't gonna bad mouth you. I do. I'm uh, only bad mouth the ops, though. But I'm gonna be respectful because it's a good brother show. But catch me yes, on sir, Sunday. Yes, sir. No, no, no griminess, Mister Samurai. No griminess, man. Yeah, we just talking shit. Said. Catch Why me not? Sunday when we at my house, and I'll let you know who I'm talking about if you want to know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Just so y'all know, that's a preclude to Sunday. And also, y'all heard Thompson say he's gonna be live next Thursday, man. I'm in there every time I get the opportunity to, even if I have at work. Uh, yeah. Talk to you better see me the leak next time you go old too, motherfucker. I'll be willing to get up there and talk. Man, to I be you. man, you should have seen me running in the fucking house, man. I was trying to get the dogs done and shit. I ran home. I was oh, tripping yeah, and falling and shit. You shit bro. Be doing I'm gonna shoot shit. you. I'm gonna hit you up early in the morning though for next week. I'm gonna send you the link early. I, I got to get a little bit more coordinated with what I'm doing. I ain't gonna lie, I've been lacking. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. You got that new baby over there, bro. Just give me shit. Yeah, he up here. Yeah, man. He's slapping and spitting on me and shit and throwing up gang signs. This dude wildin', man. He a Brooklyn nigga. You downloaded all them Brooklyn fucking genetics into him. Maybe you should have went on like a, a month hiatus as a month before you start procreating. Just download man, that dude 11 months shit. old running around, B. I mean, come on, man. That dude is 11 months running around, bro. It's a lot. It's a lot. I done chained up all of my damn cabinets and shit. My house looked like a damn prison We're sanctuary. Like, Everything got chains yeah. on it and shit. This motherfucker hey. can't open shit up. <laughs> we in the age of the star child, bro. You know, you got to deal with it. <laughs> yeah, man. 
But God bless me. That's all I can say. I finally got a boy, man. I was getting surrounded by females out here, bro. I don't know what I... I thought I was standing in front of the microwave when they first came out too long. I thought that shit changed my, my uh, fucking... Um, <laughs> you knocked off all your fucking wives. <laughs> nah, man. I, uh, my uncle had told me this, and, and I, I truly believe this, man, because I had two boys, first my first two tries, man. He said, man, you got to take your wife, man. You got to sit her down. You got to feed her some Slim Jims and some Capri Suns if you want to have a boy, man. You know what I'm saying? You got to feed her the little boy snacks and stuff to get to get her her ready. You know what I'm saying? For what you about to give her. <laughs> shout out to my shout out to my man Buck. My Buck, my man Buck said when I was talking to him about having another baby and shit, this dude told me he was like, Man, you gotta get off your back. I said, What? He said, Get off your back. You gotta get on top. I said, What the fuck? Well, you know shit, I done did I started doing some push-ups and shit. <laughs> started doing that shit. And man, that motherfucker came rolling right out. First try. I said, Man, look at that. I was just fucking the game up these years, boy, being lazy. Ain't nothing like laying down, no boy. Hell yeah. <laughs> I stopped doing it on missionary though. That's how I got all three of mine. I can shoot the club up from the back. I can back door the club all day. As soon as I get on top, boop, boop, boop. Like, what the fuck? So all I ain't right, had missionary text in six years since my last daughter was born. I'm cool. <laughs> you just gotta, straight from the back all you know, day, every day. You got to go in there and get your wife that old school fucking. And that's how you get your boys. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Drink, drink an old school Budweiser and, and lace your Tims all the way up to the top. You got to use the top holes in your Tims. You got to keep your socks on. Uh, the black socks. The crew socks. They got to be pulled up. <laughs> you can't have no lotion on your legs. <laughs> you go in there ashy. Like a 90s Mr. Marcus on their ass. Hell yeah, look like a 1990 plumber in there, boy. That's how you got to do it, yeah. though. That's the only way it's going. You gotta have black, not church socks, but crew socks, so you can get that grippage. <laughs> oh, samurai, yo, high diddy, yeah, they got a green screen and shit. Hey, bro, put your logo up back there once you get learn how to do it. Hell yeah! So I was, I was, I gotta talk to Soul about it, man. I was trying to do that shit, but we started live, bro. Uh, you know, trying to trying to be bougie. Uh, the good brother at Pelican Bay, Pelican Bay canines, man. He uh. He's stunting. I just want y'all to know this though, real quick. All right, so I bought all this shit, right? I bought all this. Can y'all see it on the screen? Yeah. I bought, I bought all this shit, man. I don't know how you use none of this shit, man. Well, actually, that's mic. I I use it uh, low key. Your boy Samurai used to want to be a rapper or whatever. So I've had this mic since 2011. Around the same time I started. Let me hear some bars then. Uh, Look, Ram nigga, Ram I'm Ram acting, Ram you acting, Jackson. I remain action pack. You action lacking. Since it's more cats that rap, more tracks is whacking. Meaning more cats get clapped, more gats is blasting. Ram, <laughs> uh, let me explain something to you. I said I thought I was a rapper. All right. Oh, so let, me, let me clarify that. Let me clarify that right now. I, I learned real fast that rap was my thing, and that's when I started training dogs. All right, but uh, no, I feel you. <laughs> I'm, I'm still a rapper, you know. We got studio all day. I seen you some music, bro. I just uh redid the can't go for that. Hey but, man, uh, oh, that's an old joke. That's an old school joint. Yeah, yeah I, got I like that one. And all, and yeah. uh, I got clearance for uh no scrubs too. I'm finna redo that. Heck yeah, yeah man. Like I, I would love to, to post it out there, man, and get to, uh, to share it with my with my neighborhood people. You know what I'm saying? Um, we like to do like a lot of local performances here. And yeah, also back home in the Carolinas, man, the Myrtle Beach area. Oh yeah, well, we go on tour and all that shit, bro. Like I get paid to do this shit, man. It, every That's summer we go on tour. We hit the West Coast. Whoever want to bug us, you know, we need a thousand dollars a piece, and it's four of us. So, and you know, we need the expenses paid, all that. Where we go, but yeah, bro, we got a record label, all that shit, man. A full on recording studio, a broadcasting studio, like. I still yeah, I saw the link on that joint. That joint is tough. I like that setup. You guys sent me the link on that video. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you should get back into it, though, man. Rap easy. Hey, big facts. I, I, I'm thinking about it, Bram. Uh, also, you got a question that thing says, where, uh, says Ram. But he, I know what he meant. He said, Ram, where can we find your music at? Go ahead and shoot him that link. Uh, shit, man. Uh, I'll uh, email it to or I'll uh, send it to one of y'all. I'll send it. Thompson, I send you a link or a uh, soul and just put it in the chat. Yeah, do so because I'm in the field and shit. And I'm 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 Wi Fiing off another cell phone, so I'm 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 barely I'm barely right right now. Send it to Soul. I ain't at right. home. Bet. Crockett, salute. Welcome to the chat. 
But also, y'all brothers out there, y'all heard it. Uh, y'all heard it here. And Ram, Ram, Ram has talked about this before on the panel, on the on the seven eight panel as well as the game dog talk, man. Y'all make sure y'all check all the other streams out because a lot of these streams they build upon each other. You know what I'm saying? Even if I'm not listening today to another dog brother, man, like the uh, the movement is the movement is out there, y'all. So make sure y'all checking out all these brothers' channels and the lives. Additionally. All y'all brothers who have streams of any kind, there's this thing called the Dogman's TV Guide on Facebook. Please post ahead of time y'all's y'all's things on there. It was created by Elevated Kennels. It's basically a TV guide for uh, all the links to everybody's channel, so they can see you when you go live. Uh, you know, so uh, make sure y'all get to that as well. Uh, ran by Elevated. Shout Kennels. out to Elevated Kennels too. You deal with the homie Brown. Good. Shout out to Elevated Kennels, man. I think he got some of that Black Knight stuff off my man. Oh yeah, he did. He he actually got he actually got a picture with him and everything, bro. And um, that's what that's one of the reasons why when he messaged me, I actually responded to him. I was like, I don't know this cat, but he uh he got uh the right brothers mess with him, so I'm I'm like, cool. He been vetted. Yeah, it's oh, dope, that's dope. Yeah, brothers coming together, man. That's dope. Hey, so hey. I sent you the link to a video we dropped. <clears throat> yeah, I think I just I tried to drop it in. The comment section. Let me see. I thought I dropped it. If you if you can't drop it in the comment se uh, section, bro, make a post and um, you know, like you can make a post on, on uh, YouTube or whatever. Make a post and I and I share it on my on my channel as well. And if y'all good brothers can share it on y'all yeah, channel right now, so we can so we can push I, 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 I'm it. Community tab right now. Hey, hey uh, what's Dre, up? What's can up, you, uh, uh, Can you talk about that uh, male pup you got and and, and how you uh, corrected him? Oh man, so all right. So I don't know if y'all was in my last live, and if y'all hadn't, I'd get y'all caught up real fast. But anyways, man, so I let the puppy go, and the guy I let the puppy go to, man, he was like, I want to feed him raw and all this stuff, man. And I kind of uh I jumped when I should I jumped when I should have stayed up, stayed grounded, man. So I let the puppy go. And of course, this dude takes the puppy at six weeks old, goes to a purely raw diet, don't understand the diet, I don't think. And uh Mind you, like typically with a six week old puppy, I'm still giving milk replacement, all kind of stuff on the side. I'm not telling you all my, my whole secret, but like I'm making sure my puppy's got the best, the best chance possible to uh to make it. And so obviously the dog didn't get the nutrients they needed and the hawks got weakened, right? And so um he's like, Man, you know, I took it to the vet, the hawks are weak, this, that, and the third. I'm like, out of five puppies, they all were great when they left here. And I y'all know I used to show my puppies before every live, so you can see their structure. But anyways, long story short, so I said, hey, man, I'll give you your money back. I'll take my puppy back. So I bought my puppy back from the guy. You know what I'm saying? After he done, you know, caused whatever issues or damage he might have caused. And um, so I got him here, got him some sunlight, got him back on the same diet as my other puppies. And I got him running the treadmill. You know what I'm saying? And oh, Crockett, I agree 100 percent. But I got him on the treadmill and everything now. And I got a video coming out with him Sunday. I haven't been able to fully correct it, but like the dog, the dog is workable. You know what I'm saying? And um so I just wanted to say, man, like talking about going back to the original topic, the bonding or whatever, man, like you could correct a lot of things in these dogs, bro. But you you got to watch who you let your dogs go to. But um, yeah. yeah. Hell yeah, bro. You fucking just probably just that fucking raw diet, bro. Not enough calcium, too much protein, weak ass bones, bro. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. I just summarize something that you do to strengthen the hogs as well is uh, kennel off that, that dog. Uh, get you with those those little peak that gravel, keep them in there, and that's gonna help in, to strengthen those hawks as well, because the dogs gonna have to keep those feet uh open up the, the webbing of the feet and really balance itself to stabilize. Yeah. Facts. Yep, you gonna start that. using this stabilizer muscle. That's like using the Smith machine versus a raw bench, you know. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah, you gotta be careful with them young puppies too, man. A lot of times people don't let puppies mature, man, because they do a lot of changes and stuff as they grow and mature. A lot of people get a new puppy and then they start switching diets and doing all type of extra shit. And you really need to ask the breeder what he was feeding and stuff, because it ain't that ain't the best thing to always be switching up feed on young puppies. Sometimes they get skin allergies. Sometimes they'll start. Um, some people go to such a high fat or a high protein diet for a young puppy and then they start knuckling over and shit. And they'll, 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 their, lig their bones are growing faster than to the, their bones are growing faster than the ligaments is. So, you know, people get puppies and just OD the fuck out. Like, it's a puppy, man. Get that motherfucker some dog child with a little vitamin supplement and let the dog mature before you start switching up all kind of shit up on them, man, because they'll, they'll fuck up real bad if you do that sometimes. Some of them. 
Try yeah. adding some uh, milk fizzle to his diet too, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. And um, man, like to so all these things y'all saying, man, I 100% agree with, man. But you, you, you can't fix everybody, man. You know what I'm saying? And and that's why, like, some of these lessons, some some loss ain't a loss. It's a lesson, man. This is one of them lessons, man. I never do it again, bro. You know what I'm saying? But it's um, it is what it is, bro. It is what yeah. it is. Th thank y'all. Shit, you lucky y'all you got one some fucked up hawks, man. I didn't gave dogs to motherfuckers and I'll punch them down right now if I seen them, bro. Like you stupid motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, man, because I, I, I personally think that, you know, especially if you really don't don't understand the nutrition facts, man. Keep it simple, puppy food. Just straight puppy food. Yeah, you man. Really Everybody look you at YouTube and start grinding up cows and shit, giving it to <laughs> six month six or six week old puppies and shit. And it's like, bro. You know, if they got a history of being on that kind of feed, you got to wean them into it, like mix it with the kibble. You know, it's a lot of stuff that goes in the feed. You know, Ram is an expert with them keeps and them feeds and stuff. But, you know, little puppies, man, their kidneys can handle but so much. They liver can handle but so much. They got little bodies and they trying to process all this shit. These motherfuckers be making damn 10-star gourmet meals and shit. Like, bro, chill out. It ain't that serious. It's a puppy. Let them mature and develop. It's, 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 it's sad, man, because a lot of good puppies get called and shit behind silliness. You know what I mean? People trying to treat them like they're two years old, man. Six weeks, man. I mean, let it be a puppy. Yeah. Ain't nothing you're going to feed that dog going to make him gamer later on down the road, man. Just get them to that point where you can adjust the feed and the work, work rate on the dog. Get them to that point. That's the key. A lot of people just, that's why I make motherfuckers crawl. On hot charcoal to get a puppy from me, I because I, it's too much goes into this just to go into a novice hand and just be fucking up young dogs, man. That that pisses me off something awful. And that's why I stopped giving out the raw diets, man. Cause motherfuckers, it's so much shit to go with it, bro. Like motherfuckers just think you can just give them some chicken and a, a goddamn uh, daily vitamin, bro. Like nah, man, they still gonna need some greens, some type yeah. of minerals, like. Yeah. That's why I just fucking stop telling motherfuckers, man. I just all I do is I feed fucking kibble now. Even though I do still feed raw, but it's just if you're not willing to just even Google the shit to look to see what all go like satin balls. Most motherfuckers ain't even hip to satin balls, bro. That's the best shit you can give a dog in the winter if you're in a cold spot. The motherfuckers be walking around looking like bullies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, right on, Crockett. I appreciate that, bro. I've been loving these dogs since fucking 80 fucking six, bro. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Dre, so uh how how was the pup acting when you got at home versus the two the two that you got at the house now? Okay, bring him over here. Hey, so um he um when he first got here, you know, he was timid. And, you know, he, I could tell there was no the bond was uh was all was all pacified. And people think that giving a dog whatever it wants is how you build a bond. That's not, man. It's just like a child. You know what I'm saying? Um, even with children, speaking of children, my, my, my son about to come into the, about to come in here real quick because uh, my wife got to handle some business real quick. But um, speaking, of, speaking of that, man, uh, look at him. He salute, had young king. Yeah. Yeah. Salute, hey, salute, everybody. salute. Yeah, that's everybody. your boy. Y'all got that same forehead. <laughs> <laughs> same forehead and nose. There ain't no denying he yours. He's for yeah. you, for real. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, man. It's um a hey, M1 y'all y'all shout out to brother M1 Crockett Larry B Austin in the chat solo what up, but, M1? But connected yeah man everybody man uh show mad love but um since he's been here man like I'm I'm not gonna lie man Loki he the hottest one in the litter right now you know what I'm saying Ooh. uh the one that came back yeah uh, I, yeah yeah when you get a chance send me a picture of how his hawks look bro I'm like I can send you some uh type of little conditioning you could do to get him back strong you feel me. Hey, that's what I'm talking about, man. Show them families, man. We uh, oh, love man. Over here. I'm at the crib by myself, man. <laughs> Fuck y'all. <laughs> nobody here now. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool and all. Like, God yes, damn, sir. everybody yes, showing out. <laughs> the I have a beautiful family, family too, nigga. Too. <laughs> and, uh, congratulations, to brother Thompson, too, man. You, you mentioned you mentioned you had your new jet earlier, too, man. Congratulations, bro, man. Ain't nothing like mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. It's always a blessing. Always a blessing, man. Always a blessing. Congrats. Congrats. Uh, but yeah, man, uh, Ram. As far as that picture, man, I I send you a picture. Hell, man, you keep, uh, you you, uh, you got a room. I send you the puppy, man, because it got to go. Honest and truly, y'all, I'm gonna keep it G, brother Thompson. I gotta salute you because there's no way in hell I would have that many dogs ever in life, bro. 
I think five is my, I think five is my max, man. But honestly, uh, until I retire, I think three is what I want. I want, you know, I got my 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 male. He does what I like to do. I want to raise a female that does what I like to do. And then I'm a and obviously I would have a puppy that uh. But you know what I'm saying? I expect my dogs to live at least twelve years. You know what I'm saying? I've seen a pit bull live twenty two years before. So um, I don't need a lot of them. I just need a couple of them to do exactly what I want them to do, man. Man, different strokes for different folks. I tell people all the time: you ain't gotta have a lot. I didn't start out with a lot, you know. The the dogs on my yard is the dogs I just bred over the last 14 years. You know, I just keep my prospects that I think I can move forward with that'll better the program, you know what I mean? But you know, I, that discussion come up a lot with the amount of dogs and stuff. And I tell people, man, do what you can do. You know, I didn't start out like this. It was something that came with growth. You know what I mean? Is I got property and I had space and I could expand my yard and I could keep more prospects and, and move forward, but that's just my groove. You know, that that's not a standard for everybody else. You know what I mean? If you're a two, three dog person, it ain't nothing wrong with that. If you're a big yard person, it ain't nothing wrong with that. It's just about what you can tolerate and what you can, what you can operate comfortably. You know what I mean? So I just tell that to all the young brothers, don't come into this just trying to acquire a bunch of dogs because it's a lot. It's a lot on me physically, mentally, my wife, my kids, you know, I got a lot of help. I ain't going to sit up here and act like I'm Captain America and I'm doing all this by myself. I got a lot of people that help me do this. So, you know, just throwing that out there in the atmosphere for the young brothers. Facts. Hey, even with all the help, it still takes this man at least two hours to go through his yard, though, every day after work. So keep that in mind, bro. And that's yeah. minimum. With a headlight hours. on if it's dark. With a headlight on. If it's dark and a nine millimeter on my waist, because I'm in the I'm in the wilderness, I got rattlesnakes and all kind of shit that go bump in the night. So I'll be out hey. there, just so everybody know. <laughs> hey, speaking of snakes, man, uh, what do you do for snakes? Cause we got in, in my in my neighborhood, man. Um, two dogs just died from getting getting bit from snakes. Run. You can use the use the moth ball. The moth balls is always a good thing. The snake away is a good thing. What I did is I burned the perimeter around my yard where my dogs are. So I did control burns. When you got all that brush and shit, and if you're a person that like to keep plywood and shit laying around, that's where snakes like to lay up under. So you gotta get rid of everything that they the environment that they enjoy hiding underneath shit. So you need to pick all that wood up. Get all that. And like I said, I'm in the forest, so I do control burns. I burn all of that brush around the perimeter so I can actually see the ground. And then when you throw your mothballs or your snake away down, it can actually be in the soil to create a perimeter for your dogs and stuff. It's, it's, it's a little bit to it, depending on your area. Like I said, I'm in the woods. If you're in a, a suburban area, you ain't going to do all that burning, but you just want to set up a nice perimeter and get all that shit all of those tarps and stuff that we we fold up and leave on the side of the house and all that kind of stuff, get that shit up yeah. off the ground because they love a place to hide. That's where they want to be, hiding yeah, in a low got, area. Yeah, we got three-foot uh, rattlesnakes in my neighborhood, man. Oh, yeah. I just killed a six-foot one a couple months ago, man. Big old one. My best advice for both of y'all niggas is run. <laughs> <laughs> Go to fuck. I love shots. Morning. But dog, I this thought I was on Gates Avenue where that gun was ringing off. I let the, I dumped the whole clip off on that motherfucker. I don't care about bullets. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My kennel partner used to live in the desert. That's what we used to do. I mean, that's what I used to do. I was devious. Just let you know, I was kind of a mischievous little boy too. You were, oh, really? You you ain't had to say that. <laughs> boil, 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 boil some eggs and get some of them fake Easter eggs that you could fucking uh. Put candy in, yeah. So you place the two real boiled eggs, and then the candy, the fake egg. We put some rat poison in the egg, cause when they eat the egg, it's gonna open up, and rat poison gonna go in. They fucking shitting, you know. They have a terrible death, but yeah, I used to do that shit, and then come out and count all the dead snakes. Where I got yeah, no there, part, a terrible uh, death. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna suggest the calendar for you too, since uh, cause we got similar uh, issues. Uh, get you. Put that nine millimeter up and get you one of those Taurus Judge. They, uh, you can have that four ten shotgun shell in there. Oh yeah, well, I got. I, I rock with the Taurus nine millimeter too, man. Shit, I, I, I'm just a nine millimeter fan. I was always since a little kid that was my my weapon of choice, man. I mean, I was in the car with my homie with that forty five, and he let that go, man. I ain't hear shit in four days. I said, you can have that, bro. You can have <laughs> that. <laughs> I'll be going to the fucking range on the weekend, popping my four five. That should be the loudest shit in there, bro. 
knock the goddamn crown out your tooth, man. That shit is loud, boy. You with the fucking earmuffs on, that shit be loud as a bitch. And that's crazy, bro. Because uh, I'm I'm a fan of the uh, of the forty cal, man. I, I want I want a little bit more stop power than the nine, and a little bit more a little bit more velocity. Oh yeah, you trying to knock golf ball holes in the motherfucking horn. <laughs> what up? What up? Salute. Yeah, that nigga voice came in hella deep. It sound like somebody. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's, that's my brother. Yeah, yeah. Thought somebody was in trouble. <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey. You salute, good hey. brother. I hey, see y'all talking about that dog regiment. What's happening? Hey, uh, what's up? With, what's up with that pup, man? Oh man, she doing great. She doing great. Yeah. Uh, she active as hell. I think um. She got a little mental, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. She's I'll, bad, I'll, man. I'll, she just I'll, a bad puppy. Yeah, when I took him in the test today, I, I was like, damn. I, I, me and Dre was like, yeah, we want that dog, you know what I'm saying? But she was gone, you know what I'm saying? Who's that yeah. talking? That, uh, Big A. Oh, uh, what's happening, man? Yeah, man, I had I was gonna I was gonna do whatever I needed to do to get her right quick, man. Uh, I've been in this, you know, dealing with them for for a long time, for years, bro. And getting back started now, shit. I'm over fifty, so shit. I'm back on it now, and uh, I just wanted to have her to basically see if she make the cut. You know what I'm saying? Um, I know what she come off of. I know about the line. If she make it, she make it. If she don't, then bro, she don't. Then we just, you know, get, get something else. You know what I'm saying? Fit the collar. That's all it is. Oh my nigga, that's the name of the game, man. She yeah. beautiful as fuck though, but that don't mean shit. You know what I'm saying? She she's still a dog. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. She pretty as fuck. She got a good attitude. She's very very fucking aggressive to be a puppy. She's sitting there whining right now because I won't let her get up top. But uh, she's a good little dog. She's a good little dog. As far as you know, so far as a puppy, yeah, I got her on a barf diet, so she all right. Yeah, for sure. Hell yeah. Uh, he said the barf diet. That's the real raw diet for everybody who don't know. When motherfuckers yeah. say this the barf diet, he know what he's doing. That's that's a man to ask, you know. Yeah, she got a she got a she gets a little kibble. I ain't giving it to her straight raw, but uh, she gets a little bit of kibble for the cut with her vegetables and uh, you know, I throw a little bit of uh blueberry or something in there. You know what I'm saying, like that or sweet Get potato. Get antioxidants. Please yeah. understand it and uh. I just let it rock, man. Let nature do what it's going to do with her. She long, she lean, and she's starting to, you know, give a little detail to her structure. So I'm just going to let it finish doing what it do. She ain't nothing but a babe. She got a lot of growing to do, even though she was the runt. You couldn't tell she was running now, though. Yeah. Yeah. She's she down lively. She over there making all them good dog noises. Mm -mm. Yeah. She, uh, she's standing she, here with she, my head. She's she standing up with her head in my lap, hearing the conversation. She want to be involved. Yeah, yeah, she look just like a mother too. Yeah, she do, bro. Like the twins or something, though. But uh, Man. That, that color pattern came out different. Or, you know, she came out a little real yellow, like yeah. yellow, yellow. You know, and hell yeah, I should have named her Mellow Yellow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be all right, man. She got a lot of going, growing to do. We'll see what happens in the long run. Oh, did. What she like nine, ten weeks old now? Eh? Oh, so yeah, they, 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 they got a long time, time to go. Time. Yeah, enjoy the dog, man. She, yeah, she ain't nothing but a baby, bro. She ain't yeah. nothing but a little baby. She do what she do. She tear up shit. She got a bunch of shit to fuck up. Hey, I'm gonna let her do her thing. Shut up. That's hey, the only one bed. you got right now. Go to bed. No, I got a bunch more down in uh, on our family yard. Oh yeah, we got, we got a bunch of shit down there, bro. It's just. It'd be so many complications between us boys. I'm pretty much the oldest, and they still going to jail. They still in the streets. So the younger generation in our family done told me that they didn't have to take over. So, yeah, I got some some family in the feds, and they done left the yard to the youngsters, and they done did a good, good job preserving the shit, bro. Oh, that's Shot good, man, yeah, bro. Hell yeah. Keep the fucking line preserved and going still. Shit, it's like 30 dogs down there still. So I was pretty proud of that. I just left. I went. I went back. What was that last week, Dre? Yeah, we for last yeah. last week for my birthday. Yeah. yeah, I shot back down there. So I had to go see my family, my and my daughter, and 
I wanted to check on the yard. I, I thought it was going to be a disaster. I thought it was going to be extinct. Surprised the hell out of me. Surprised the hell out of me. Yeah, it's dope, man. Shit, happy belated birthday, too, brother. Yeah, I appreciate y'all, boys, man. And another thing, man, I appreciate y'all doing what y'all doing, man. I thought I would never see the day, bro. You know, I've been fucking with them for a long time. And this right here, coming from where I come from with this shit, this is a blessing, real talk. And especially to have brothers like Ram and Thompson. And then, you know, we got all these different kennels that's, that's, that's up and running. And you're looking at the twins and, hey, some of these guys would never know none of these people or wouldn't have a chance to talk to them or none of this. This is all valuable. So I appreciate it, everybody that participate, man, and keep it rolling and try to preserve it to this original form, you know, how it's supposed to be. And I appreciate uh -huh. that, bro, because we wasn't doing this. All my secrets would have just went to my little young homies or just died with me, bro, you know? <laughs> Well, I ain't been. I'm like, they're going to die with me. But uh, the most important thing is we know them. We know what they are. Yeah. You know, we know what they are. You can't and give I, up every goddamn thing, but I'm, I'm going to give up what I can to keep your dogs healthy and keep, keep you yeah, knowledgeable. Keep the game going, you know, but. That's right. I'm glad That's people right. listening. That shit still trip me out. Motherfuckers fuck with it like that, bro. You know, like I've been famous for, for rapping. I would never have thought a motherfucker fuck with me on the dogs, you know. Hey, it shocked the hell out of me, my boy. I was like, man, are you serious? It's, hey, it was a secret society, but it was plentiful. I thought it was extinct like a sun gun. I ain't been hearing about nothing all these years. I ain't know nothing all these years. And then all of a sudden, I'm starting to hear the wave again, and I'm hearing the wave. I'm spooked, but I'm hearing the wave, so I'm standing back. Oh, I'm old now. I'm going to stay back, but I'm hearing and seeing the wave now, and I'm liking it. I'm liking yeah, it. I'm hell yeah. It. That's the same boat I'm in, man. Just, I'm just stick my head out a little bit, pull it. Okay. We get a little bit loose, you know. Talk to these yeah, about some dogs. To me, when I was doing dogs, I didn't think I was nobody. Just another motherfucker trying to beat the best, bro. You know, I didn't yeah. think I'd be up here. Yes, you got to I didn't do nothing. I loved it to go with the best. Shut up. I wanted to play with the best. Go to bed, Nani. Go to bed. Hey, OG, you said something, though. Uh, it is a blessing because, you know, like Ram was saying, you know, had it not been for the, the boom tube and everything, this information, you know, it's like uh, the old adage, you know, when that knowledge goes with them. You know what I'm saying? So this is a beautiful Real thing, sure. this information. It's a, uh, it's. I'm blessed to be able to chop it up with brothers like this. So salute to everybody on the panel. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, I, it gives me. It done gave me my like. It done spark that fire back up in my spirit. You feel me? I'm about. Yeah, I'm not gonna yeah. have two dogs on my yard no more. I'm gonna have a ten dog stall. You know, kennel stall. But uh, it done spark fire back up in my ass, and it done gave me a little bit more life, bro. You know, when you yeah. come from. Losing a lot of shit, people you love, and losing a lot of people you love, you become numb inside, bro. And the yeah. only, the only thing I had was my motherfucking dogs, man. And uh, some just came and told me, man, get back into your dogs and don't worry about shit. You don't raise all your kids, man. Get back into the dogs, and even if she don't make the cut, man, I'll spay her, bro, and she'll just be a wild ass house dog. She ain't going to where she is. Yep, that's the beauty of the game. No, you always searching for it. This one might not work, but when you come across the one that works, it's a beautiful thing, bro. You like, hell, yeah, it was all worth it, you know? Well, yeah, 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 yeah. You want them to work, but her being, you know, you know, my Texas shit, what I got going up now, going on now, she, she basically the start of it. Yeah. So, like I say, if, if they don't make it, usually, you know what I'm saying, they don't stay here, period. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah, you just call them off the yard. She don't still live in the house with my old lady because my old lady already told me I can't, I can't get rid of her. I can't oh, call yeah. her. Out. Man, so that, trust that, me. That'll be her motherfucking dog. You know, if you don't I'm make it. Hey, yo, brothers. You know Go ahead. Hey brothers, I, I gotta catch this next. I gotta catch this next call real quick. I know I'm gonna drop y'all thing, man. Hey man, it was a pleasure. I appreciate you, Sam I Kendall's for inviting me on the drink. Ram, you know what time it is, and Ram, you gotta get up with me. Oh boy, straight. He out. I will touch base with you on that later today. But yeah. hey, I appreciate sharing the panel with y'all brothers, man. I mean, I, I really enjoyed this this morning, man. Y'all stay blessed, man. Yeah, 
Hell yeah. Oh, there she goes. That's a pretty ass dog, man. Eugene Thompson, bro. Hey, appreciate you, Thompson. Yes, sir, right, one. brother. Salute. Wow, bro. Yeah, that's a pretty dog. But shit, man, I got to get to work, too. Shit, it's 8 o'clock now, man. Get my ass in this fucking stupid-ass traffic and work on these cars, bro. Yeah, you got confirmation too. Yeah, the dog in my picture was a grandson of Mayday. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. oh, yeah, she gonna have some yoppers, boy. I yeah, like the little yeah, tight yeah. terrier mouth too. I hate lippy dogs, man. Them motherfuckers always get fanged. Fang, you, you ain't lying. Yeah, I hate to have to dig off in there and get that motherfucker in the house. Hell boy, yeah. Bullshit. Especially when bullshit. you be winning and you be ahead, you all you fame like motherfucker. <laughs> oh, yeah, see, but you gotta watch you gotta watch motherfuckers too, cause they'll holler that shit and that motherfucker don't be fine now. Dude, I was notorious all oh, fang and turn caller. <laughs> let, let you start getting ahead of me. Uh, fang, <laughs> her. <laughs> hey, I'm trying to tell you, motherfuckers, we'll pull it quick, man. That's all, bitch. Hey, I ain't fine. Let me see the ref ain't look it off. Turn. If he acknowledges now, if he acknowledges, hey, go get, get a handle. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> ref, hey, see, that's another thing folks don't understand. See, back in the day, you know, you can always call or holler out a turn. But see, one thing about me, I know. I can I can look at the at the ref and if he if he acknowledged me and I just called that scene that time, if you ain't knowing too bad, I'm gonna go snatch mine and get him on my dog. I'm going with you. Me and I call a turn on me. Let me see the ref fucking talking to somebody, somebody in the it. crowd. Yeah, turn. Yeah, I'm right. Oh yeah, turn on you. Bet. <laughs> Bet, because it's time to start scratching, buddy. Yep. Then you know the game this is there. If you got the tools to go with that goddamn game, let's let's scratch battle then if that's what you really want Hell to do. Hell yeah, fast hand pregnant this bitch. But shit, man, I gotta go. I'll talk to you niggas all day about these goddamn dogs. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. Check the convo, man. I listen in every night, man. Already, Everybody, man. Good. It's always a pleasure chopping it up with new brothers, man. Samurai, appreciate you having me up here, bro. Shit, whenever you go live, man, let me know. I got you, bro. Oh, like man. I told you, I, I have to build channel up. Hey, Ram, for you get gone, man, check this out. I don't do the social media thing. YouTube is about as far as I go with it. You know, I'm a hard guy. Get my number from Samurai. Yeah, 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 but I'll let, yeah. I'll let you right quick go for a little minute. Yeah, yeah. It's okay for Samurai to give you my number. Just shoot me a text so I know it's you because I'll, I'll fuck around and answer you. Hello? Who is this? Are you telling Pete Bull? You want to buy Pete Bull? Yeah, I'll play you out. You know, if I don't know who it is. But yeah, shoot me a text, bro. I got you. I got you stop. Go to bed. I done told you go to hey, bed. I ain't hey, uh, hey Ram, bro. Uh big salute to you, bro. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate yeah. the support. And, oh, yeah, um, thank you, bro. man, for doing what you do, bro. You giving out them awards and shit, man. I thought you was just a fly by night, nigga. Yeah. I see you double back. <laughs> yeah, oh, are you yeah. serious? I'm gonna fuck with him then. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, man. Well shit, y'all brothers be great today, man. Be safe yes, and sir. stay dangerous out there. Yeah, so yeah, free. Everybody too, bro. Stay dangerous. Be safe Peace. and stay dangerous, man. Thank hey y'all, hey y'all, brothers. Uh, while Ram is exiting, man, I'm gonna go and give a shout out to some guys in the chat, and then we're gonna keep this thing uh rolling, man. Hey, so Outlaw Texas Kennels is in the chat, Dreadlock in the chat. Salute to y'all, brothers. I'll be seeing y'all, Vinny back up in the And uh, they wanted to know who was all in the panel, so I shout it out. Today's panel consisted of Thompson's Kennel, uh, Welcome Down Ram, the good brother Soul Power, aka Game of Kennels, M1, Big A and Paula, and your host, Samurai Kennels. Williams old yellow dogs. We still in here. We still cooking up though. M one, go ahead, shout out to the channel, bro. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, uh, everything, man. Everything looking good, man. Every, it's looking good, bro. I just need to go ahead and find this land, man. I can't find that spot, Dre. Can't find them. I don't know what area I really want to be in, but everything I done looked at is super hot. They tripping. And they ain't got no trees or none of that shit on the property. The property is basically naked with just growed up with vines and shit. No trees, no nothing. They get hot out. Super hot. Probably acres. So I'm like, shit. I don't know. I know where it's cheap at, but do I necessarily want to go down through there with it, though? Hey, be that far yeah. out of touch with everything. To be that far out of touch with everything, you know. Again, I don't know Real. about all that. Real yeah. talk, bro. I'm trying to go. I'm moving out of Arizona to find me an old home on the range with it, with a deer and antelope play type type uh, type gang stuff. You know what I'm saying? But uh, 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 doomsday prep type thing. 
Yeah, but I'm from the West. I don't want to go back towards home, man. There's too many bad memories. I love it, but all I all I think about is the bullshit when I'm at home, bro. You know, that's all. I go home and it's cool and everything, but I don't like being there. To, none of my bad memories come about, so I don't even deal with it. You know, losing my son was hard, boy. So, man. yeah, I can't do it. You know, I can't do it. I'd rather stay down there in the woods somewhere, you know, and I can have as many dogs as I want to again, you know. Hey, come, come. I, I left uh, Cali and never looked back, bro. Nah, I ain't gonna never look back. My daughters, my daughters is pissed at me. You know, they mad. They mad. I won't come home. You know, it, it ain't home no more. You know, in your mouth. Damn right, it ain't home no more. That's y'all shit now. You know, we had to hand everything down, to y'all. Y'all get the streets and all. Here y'all go. I'm old. I ain't. You know, I made a pass. You know, what I'm saying getting in trouble too many times, and I'm good. If I go home and move home now, why would I do so? So the feds could try to do something stupid and be like, oh, yeah, you you this, you that, you this, you that. Hey, man, that was 30 years ago, 20 years ago. You know what I'm saying? Come on, bro. And I don't got time for it. Yeah, but I ain't got time for it. You know, oh, you running the neighborhood again. You back in your neighborhood, everything done crunk up. Gang task force knocking my vehicles every time they see. Sheriffs want to pull a nigga every time they see. I ain't got time for that life no more, bro. I don't. Yeah, I've been yeah. through it, that shit, bro. I gave it too much, too much time in my life, bro. So fuck all hey, that. Brother, brother Samurai, I heard you saying you was talking about the doomsday uh, prepping, you know what I'm saying, wanting to be around certain uh, game, whatnot, uh, in Arizona. I must suggest you have to uh, go north. So you have to look into uh, Page, Arizona, but in Flagstaff, if you look for big game as well. Uh, good hunting and fish. Yeah, but all y'all brothers in the panel, man, like like Ram said, man, I'm a, I'm a follow up kind of guy. M1 can vouch for this. Uh, uh, my good brother Big A can vouch for this, and so you can vouch for this too, man. When I tell y'all, once I get my spot, y'all boys want to come out there. We can we, we can shoot some uh some old. I don't know if they got buffalo out there, but whatever they got, we we split it. You know what I'm saying? Four five ways, whatever. You take that stuff home and fill up your your deep freezer with it, big dog. Yeah, yeah. Patrick say uh, <clears throat> uh, Ross say uh. Pat Patrick didn't have trees on his yard and was the greatest dog breeder, you know, in his time, in his opinion. But, yeah, that's true. But I like a little shade myself because I sit out on the yard a lot. I'm an outside, I'm an outside person. I'd rather be out on my yard all day than be sitting cooped up in the house. So, yeah, I, I, I appreciate them trees, and especially they give all good oxygen, man. Yeah, I was just going to say that, OG. Got to have that clean yeah. air. Damn right. And I ain't going to sit up here and have to be worrying about, you know, extra money, uh, finding extra scrap wood to do this and do that. It's cool to do that if you want to do that, but them good old trees, you know, they help out more than anything. So, yeah, I'm looking for some trees, you know, a little standing timber, nothing. I don't need the greatest yeah. biggest pines in the world. Hell, it could be a gum tree. I don't give a damn. Let it be some trees out there. I got I got a bunch of them gum trees in the front, but I tell you what, though, they keep the house at least three, four degrees cooler. You got to understand that. It all comes into play on the electric bill and all. You ain't got to run your AC so hard yes, as sir. much. Yes, sir. You know, it cuts down. You know, you know what it do. You know. Yes, mm -hmm. sir. Keep them expensive like down, that, amenities, all of that. I mean, even providing shade for your animals is vital. And these hot, right. these hot months in the summertime, you know what I'm saying? The best shade is Mother Nature. Right. But, uh, shit, I don't had uh, my day, I don't seen folk garden burn up. No trees around it. I've been so hot some summers, man, and they can't keep enough water on the type of shit in there. So, yeah. Come you know, on, I need them trees. Need speaking them speaking trees. of gardens, speaking of gardens, Big A put me on this. Big A, I'm putting your secret out there, bro. Big A, yes, Big A put me on the mint thing, man. So I owe it to you, and Brother Melvin, I, I got to get with you, bro. Uh, I got to get my mint going, but I'm not even going to do it till I get to Arizona, bro, because right now I've been so busy with this move, man. I can't even I can't even see left from right right now, bro. Brother, it's so easy. I'm telling you. Do not, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to recommend, do not plant mint in your ground, though. It's highly evasive. It would take over everything. Yeah, yeah, that stuff, that, that stuff, yeah, that stuff will grow wild. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Plant it in containers, yeah, and it, it will replenish itself every year, brother. It'll go Deal. dormant during the wintertime. As soon as it starts to warm up, it you think all your men died off, man. That stuff Ooh. starts sprouting. You good. Damn right. And she'll do it. She'll do it. Yeah, uh, that mint, 
you can always use, you know, cedar. But me myself, what I do is I go get that damn sulfur and lime. That sulfur and lime, I uh, I go around my per perimeters. Hell, I even put it in the dog's chain spots, and then uh, the chain to mix it up in the dope for me. I ain't never had no problems with complications with the dogs we use the soul for a lot. It keeps the snakes and the ticks off the dogs, you know, in our chain spot. So I've been doing that for years. Hey, yeah. no. She ain't trying uh, to bite on the Shout out to uh, Brother Fred over there on uh, Thompson's Kennel. They uh, they were speaking on uh, using that solar salt as well. That, 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 yeah. Please believe it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It worked. But like they say, let everybody know. Once you put that mess down, whatever's out there, if it can't get away, it's coming in. You hey, know, brothers, coming in. hey, brothers, y'all see this thing right here? Uh, Brother Cross says, uh, anybody ever use Damascus uh, earth? Uh, Diatomaceous earth, yes, sir. <clears throat> yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I, I do. Uh, I put DE in my dog houses. Um, I also coat my dogs with DE. And then it's also a food grade that I do put in my dog's food as well. And it's just a good parasitic uh, killer or, or uh, maintenance that I do. Mm. Yeah, brother, sure. brother Ram, bro, brother Ram. I would, I do want to uh, send a cautionary note, brother Ram. You are here sending these messages, bro. I hope you ain't driving a message. Now. You know what I'm saying? Uh, safety first. <laughs> safety first. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I'm yeah, we driving the text. Talking to get away with, but don't, don't be don't be driving the text anymore. Hey, hey, uh, brother Samurai, you mind if I do a shameless plug? Absolutely, go ahead, go ahead, absolutely. Okay, so, uh, get, in the next two weeks, I'm gonna be doing a major garden overhaul. So, y'all stay tuned. Uh, we're doing some uh, non-till earth gar I mean, non-till gardening. So, uh, for anybody who has septic or they don't want to till the earth or anything like that, this would be uh, something that y'all would be able to use. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be converting a large part of my yard into a food forest. So y'all stay tuned. There'll be a lot of good information on that. You know what I'm saying? If you if you know better, you grow better. And all of that, that's, I'm on my health tip. You know what I'm saying? I, if I'm feeding my dogs the best, I got to be eating the best. And that's how I'm looking at it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Take care of yourself as well as the dogs. The dogs come first, true indeed. But hell, you gotta you gotta take care of yourself and family. Yeah, like you say, I like what you say. You, you want your land to sustain your family and your dogs. That's the goal. That's the goal. Yes, sir. Yeah. Make it work, and it can work. It can work. Yes, sir. I'm gonna be doing a major overhaul. I'm dredging out a big pond in my front yard. It's gonna be a fishing pond. You know what I'm saying? I, I want to take away a large oh. part of my grocery bill. Uh, Look, just by growing at home. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, see, that's that's another thing. That's a plus for the dogs. A lot of folks don't understand. You know, I swim my dogs a lot, bro. You know, I swim my dogs a lot, and you having that pond in your front yard is great exercise. See, it's just like the same thing what they do with them thoroughbred horses. But we'll get more into that later. <clears throat> but that 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 water, excellent for them. And they love Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And it, it keeps them cool. So you yeah. get more out of it. Non impact. You get, you get more out of it. Yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, swimming is probably some of the best cardio you can do. And you it's can the work best. some you muscles know. you didn't even know you had. <laughs> Every muscle in your body got to work there. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why you think they do it to them doggone horses, man? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Thoroughbreds, they put them in that swim tank and they let them swim do their thing and they love it. It keep them cool. And they keep them cool as well. They use them, all their muscles in their body. Yeah, man. I um I hope that uh whatever homestead I do have has a, a natural water source there, man, for for things like that, bro. Cause uh the swimming thing, I haven't I haven't used it yet, but I'm gonna tell you right now, brother, brother, brother M one ain't never gonna tell y'all this, but he a mentor of mine, and so is brother Big A. And so all of these guys are also real okay. samurai. And so, um, if they if they using it, then then I'm at least gonna try it because I, I I trust these brothers' knowledge, man. They've all shown themselves to be worthy. Yeah, man, I appreciate that. Yeah, I ain't gonna let y'all tell you nothing wrong. I ain't gonna tell y'all nothing wrong. If I don't know, if I don't know, I just say I don't know. 
instead of acting like I know and tell y'all something wrong. If I don't know, I'll just say flat out hell, I don't know. Or if it's something that I feel like I shouldn't respond to or answer, I will say I don't know. <clears throat> Thanks. You know, yeah. but yeah. Hey, that, that's is a beautiful good. quality right there. Uh, far too often do we run into people who have all the answers. So when I run into uh, oh, humility with, with brothers and sisters who don't know, them the type of people I like to be around. Well, them folks are the type of folks that always make themselves look like an ass. You're constantly talking, you don't learn nothing. You can't learn nothing if you're steady running your mouth. And if you think you know it all, that's too bad. You don't never get too old or too good to learn something, man. You can learn daily if you just allow it, you know. Listen yeah. to a person. You know how to distinguish what's real from the bullshit. Get give it time. Listen. And see yeah. what you you know, see what you see out of a person. But yeah, most of them type there, they always yeah. bumping their head anyway. Thinking they know uh -oh. every damn thing. <clears throat> hey, so what's up? Go ahead, big game. Oh, I was about to say, an open oven can't break no bread, you know. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Nah, I, yeah, I, I, need, um, um, I know I all my partners that, uh, that I need a samurai and all the samurais. We're gonna, we're gonna thrive, you know, we're gonna thrive and keep going no matter yeah. what. But between all of us, what well, we know, you know, everything good, bro. Everything good. A lot of information, so yeah, it's all good. That's available, and yeah, we willing to share that with y'all, with everybody as well. You know, it ain't nothing yeah. secret about no health. You know, it ain't nothing no secrets to the health thing. You know, we can yeah. we can provide that. You know, to yeah, the so public. Ram said, "Uh, one last one, y'all." <laughs> he said, "Find <laughs> a way to put your slap mill inside your swim tank. Only fill it up just past the top of the belt. You're welcome." Hey, and, oh um, man, I gotta get a soundboard for this because what I want is uh, y'all remember that thing from uh, don't be a minute, I drink your juice in the hood, the, the parody that the Wayne's brothers did. Whenever Man, they sir. had, whenever they had something that was a message, yeah, they'd be like message, yeah, yes, like uh, yes, brother sir. Melvin, you just dropped some, you just dropped a dime, and I needed to hit him with that message right there. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. so right now we're gonna have to just improvise. I'm gonna have to just do it myself, but um, yeah, man, like it's a lot of it's a lot of dimes just being dropped there for those y'all who are some uh. Some real lowbrow gentlemen. I'm at that message is for y'all. The other people just get it naturally. But uh, you know what I'm saying? The, the, we're trying to get this message across to as many brothers as we can to make the to make the game better. Absolutely. And if we don't, like if we don't, we ain't gonna have the game no more. We got to be able to pass it down. There got to be some youngsters out there that's willing to learn and eager to learn these dogs, man. You know, I'm gonna give I'm gonna start doing what I what I normally wouldn't do. You want me to start giving them a chance, Dre? I don't, I done thought about it. You know, I done thought on it. I'll try to give these youngsters a chance, man. If they so hard, hit it sometime, bro. You can't get through to them. But, yeah, right, I'll pass hey, it okay, on. OG, OG let, me, let me add a caveat to that. You know what I'm saying? Give the, the, the youngsters the game that show they self-worth. Yeah, that's, right. that's what I was about to say. Yeah, yeah see, of course, that, I was to the point where I was like, I'm not giving them, I'm not dealing with them. Dre like, no, nah, Dre like, man, you, you know, you, you could help them out a lot. So I thought about it, and I'm going to get a chance, man. You know, I just try to stay out the way. I try to stay out the way, but, yeah, I'm with it. If we, if we don't, if we, if we don't, how are we going to preserve the breed, you know? Thanks. Hey, but I will say this, though. All my samurai men, and the, my, my three here, and, you know, there's one samurai not on screen right now. He's working right now. Big shout out to Samurai 601. But all of y'all yes, men, sir. like all every one of y'all that I talked to individually, one of the things that stood out was, Y'all talked to me as an individual. You said I wouldn't have talked to you for myself. And after our first conversation, y'all followed up, man. And it was it, it was all love, you know what I'm saying? And that and that's why I that's why I chose to deal with y'all because y'all stay consistent. And consistency right. is the key. Yes, sir. Consistency is the key, man. If you ain't got no loyalty, what do you have? If you can't stand on your word, what do you have? You know, yep. you ain't you ain't no you ain't no good. You know, you don't stand up to your word, you ain't no good. Don't never put yes, yourself sir. out there to be something more than what you are. You know, that's and that way you can be yourself. Right and that's then that way you can be yourself and a person to see that. You know. Yeah. Person to be able to see that. I don't want to do nothing but get up in the morning. I'm gonna have it to where I get up in the morning and uh don't do my little job, my own, you know, personal business. And the rest of the day I get back to the house, I'm on the yard. That's, yes, that's what I'm going to get back to. You know, I'm tired of working for 
you know, for folks and everything like that. So, yeah, I'm going to go on and get my pressure washing business back jumping and uh, I'm going to get off to myself. It's, it's going to be me and my dog, bro. And, and yeah. while y'all while y'all rocking, though, the, the good brother, Asiatic Soldier, man, he need to come on and get down with the Samurai team, too, man. Like, the Asiatic Soldier rock with us hard, yo. I don't know if y'all know this or not, but uh, other than my Samurai, Asiatic he probably is solid, bro. Yeah, he probably talked to me just as much as, as, any, as anybody, man, and, and, and is a solid brother, bro. Uh, so when y'all see this man in the chats, man, just know that I, I personally, uh, I personally endorse this guy and, and respect him. Oh yeah, you know Shout I know all my fellow A two Willer. That's my fellow A two Willer, my tractor, yeah. tractor trailer driver right there. He, he yeah, the yeah, 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 there. yeah, 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 Messed up my back. I don't had to stop driving, retire. But he, yeah, they still got me driving at work a little bit. I go yeah. out once a week. I go out once a week, and then the rest of the week I stay in at the warehouse. So it's all good. Hey I fellas, we pushing that two hour and thirty minute mark, and I hate to cut it short, but I got to go to work at twelve. It's ten o'clock my time, and y'all boys know I got to hit that gym before I go to work. Um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, up, so, one up. So Friday night or Saturday night? What night are we doing this thing, bro? Let's let's cook on Friday. Let's cook. So the cook up will be on Friday night, y'all. Those guys were here under the sound of my voice. The cook up be Friday night. Saturday afternoon, I'll be releasing the videos for everybody who submitted videos from the digital dog show, and you will have the entire week to vote. The winners will be picked based upon votes, and I will be blessing your cash apps directly for the winners live. The, the good brother at Pelican Bay said he would host the release for the winners and he will actually announce the winners, but I will be blessing your cash apps on the spot once you win. Nice. Man, shout out to yeah, Tony Young in the chat. Yeah. Shout out to Tony Young. Yeah, Tony Young. Yeah. Tony Young was good. Yeah, Tony Young, my brother, my brother. Yeah, hey, man. hey, uh, hey, uh, Impala. Yes, sir. I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I'm I need to get your info, family, so we can rap. Yeah, yeah. Uh, J Holla at Dre, man. Same thing with M1. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. And the M1, right. I got, I got, I got to get you. Um, I got to get you. Uh, welcome down, Ram Info. He said, he said, he uh, you good with it? So, uh, yeah, big dog. But um, yeah, all y'all brothers, man, stay safe. I'm, a, I'm gonna get up off here with, with, a, with a plug of uh, uh y'all know my, y'all know I have my, my, uh, my channel, and I have my, my website as well as my apparel link. If you want to support me, I'd rather you buy a shirt than buy a puppy. But uh, all y'all brothers, go ahead and plug y'all channels, and then we're going to get up out of here. Roger that. Roger that. Hey, be safe and stay dangerous till the next time. I got to see y'all Friday evening. Yeah. M1, tell them about your channel, bro. Yeah, M1, promote that channel, bro. Yeah, it's just what it is, M1, <clears throat> under the category of dogs. I was supposed to... Uh, Record another one last night, but I wasn't able to. So I guess I'll get around to it today, and uh, we'll we'll do a little something on that. I I throw one out there. I already got an idea. I'm gonna talk about how I'm gonna handle it. So yeah, I'm gonna throw one out there. Okay, that's good. Only one, you know, only one scratch master kennel, but you know the samurai kennels all the way. That's just my personal shit. The samurai, you know, the scratch masters and the scratch masters is not me. The scratch master is not the individual. It's the dogs. The pit bull terriers are the scratch masters, bro. Hey, y'all. Salute to the brother Pelican Bay who came in the house. Hey, Pelican Bay, uh, big salutes to you, bro. If I can get you on here uh, Friday night, we going live, and you know we do it every Wednesday, bro. Uh, y'all shout out to that boy Pelican Bay. M1, back to you, brother. Pelican Bay, shout out, PB. That's all. You know I do. Salute. Yes, salute. Yes, sir. I'll just be covering you. The basics on, you know, raising a good puppy, you know what I'm saying? What you got what you gotta put into it and you know what to look for and whatnot. It's gonna be a little tutorial situation on raising the dog, raising the puppy from start to finish. You know. Yeah. And I'll do it like that. I really don't like camera shit too much, but I don't know how to work all this stuff. I'm an old head. I ain't with the technology. When I was in school we had floppy disks on Apple computers, you know what I'm talking about? I'm a dinosaur yeah. with all this shit here. I don't know what to do or how to put intros and edit. I ain't on none of that. This is going to be a video. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, Soul back in the chat. Hey, Soul, while you was going, Pelican Bay just showed up. And the brother M1 said he ain't doing these intros. But I did tell him to plug in with you, Soul, because Soul is a beast yeah. in these intros. We need your help, brother. We need your help. 
I got y'all. I got y'all. I got y'all. I this. I, brother, I made my intro, my beat, and everything right here on the cell phone. On your cell phone. Right on the cell phone, <laughs> bro. That's up, bro. Cold, lady. <laughs> He said he oh, did it all over his phone. What you got? What the iPhone 10 is? Yeah. yeah, man. I I got you. I got you. Uh, man, appreciate you, Brother yeah. Samurai, for letting me uh, grace uh, your platform. Shout out to the chat. Make sure y'all elbow drop the piss off that like button. Share it to your people. It's your boy, Soap, right. aka Game Dub Kennels. You can find me right here. Shout out to the Shogun Army. We slice the sun. Shout out yes, to sir, man. Samurai and the Shogun Army. Bro. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. Shogun Army, we out here. Yes, yeah, 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 man. We appreciate man, the man Pelican Bay. He, he do he do a lot. He do he do a lot. He yeah. give us a lot. He been giving us a lot. So we yep. salute Pelican Bay on everything he do. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, big sir. Up. Yeah. Big up, big ups. Yeah. Hey, don't forget, don't forget the brother the GHK. GHK had a fire live last night as well. Uh, so yeah, man. Oh, I yeah, man. Yeah, you got, you got to make sure we got part of that Shark Tank, man. Twins going tank. hard, shark swimming. Yes, yes. Yeah, I was, I, was, I, was, I was watching Twins last night. Yeah. So yeah, I got fell yeah. asleep. <laughs> yeah, man. Them six-hour lives be getting it in, bro. Be getting it in. I love it, man. It give me something to do, man. I love these discussions, bro. I love it. I just can't wait till we can all just sit down and have us a, a, hell, of a, a hell of a meal together at a big-ass table. You know, yeah. everybody can sit down and have a big ass meal, and I want that picture, and I want that to be in my living room as my, yeah. you know, okay. that's my trophy. Yeah. All yeah. Gotta, together, and have a big have meal, sit at the table. And you know what's crazy, have bro? Samurai picnic. Yeah, facts, yeah. but you know what's crazy? Well, M One just said, man, that re that really resonates with me. My favorite song by Tupac is, uh, well, one of my favorite songs is um, Thug Mansion, and that's what he's talking about in that song specifically. You know what I'm saying? A place where we can, uh, you know, a place where we can spend time. And uh and really enjoy. It. Ain't no guns, ain't no harassing, none of that stuff, man. It's just it's just it's just love, man. Uh, but yeah, yes, so that's what I, that's what I, that's what I want. That's my vision. I want I want that for our leave here. You know what I'm saying? I want that. I want to see that. I want to have that. Hey, but PPK, I got to put you on the spot. We want you on next week's live. If y'all want PPK on next week's live, please put a thumbs up in the chat because we want to holler at you, PPK. You know what I'm saying? Strike it's all love. Up in the chat. Strike the thumbs up. Please believe it. Yeah. Yeah. Really. The man got time. We need him. Yes, sir. Yeah. We 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 want we want the man in the chat, man. I, I I'll be the first one to throw a thumbs up in there. You know what I'm saying? Show Already. Love, man. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. We want to like like uh, what's that thing Jay Z said on Encore? You know what I'm saying? Yo, Encore. Do we want more? Yes, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. The brother Dreadlock got it in there. Asiatic the brother said, yeah. Cross said, Real four love. thumbs. Better get better people want you, bro. Yeah, bro. Hey, I'll get you the link ahead of time, man. I get a list of questions. Um, But it'll be me and the Samurai Kennels, uh, Samurai Kennels Army being there, the Shogun Army. And then also realize that uh, Brother Ram and Brother Thompson will probably shoot through there as well. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I kind of want to I kind of want to get y'all channels together because the collaborative minds are greater than the individual. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please believe it. Hey, brother Dre, get your work out in, family. Much for love. Sure, yeah, for sure, man. Hey, one love, all of y'all. I appreciate the love and support, man. Samurai and the Shogun Army, we out. We out. Peace. Peace.